Hello everyone and welcome back to Fly From Home. It's uh, Catman Kitty Cammy here with another Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on aircraft review video and this is going to be a full in-depth review of the Fly Simware Cessna 414 Alpha Whiskey which is the rather lovely looking aeroplane slowly rotating in the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator hangar in front of us right now. So uh, you might be asking, oh, why haven't you done a review on this aeroplane uh, before? Because it's been out quite a while, I guess. It's been out certainly uh, quite a few months. Well, that is true, but it's been out in a beta state. So it's essentially been out in early access. And while it's been out in early access, it's been going through a uh, quite a few uh, iterations and improvements and all sorts of different, uh, different things. I've actually had this aeroplane for quite a while. Uh, certainly uh, over a month uh, just flying around and playing around with it and really it's been it's been good enough to review for quite a while but I was waiting till we had a proper full release version and as of uh, last weekend we now have the final release version of this aeroplane so I am diving headfirst and uh, attempting to uh, give you a good uh, in-depth review of this aircraft. Now uh, for those of you unfamiliar with this channel and these in-depth reviews, they are extremely long videos in case you haven't seen the uh, the runtime of this one. Um, so I will forgive you for not wanting, wanting to watch the whole thing. Uh, there are links below in the description of the video for each significant segment. So I recommend you skip to the parts that you are most interested in if you don't have uh, an hour and 40 minutes or however long uh, this particular video is going to wind up being. So I would certainly recommend doing that to save your time. Uh, if you aren't on board for a, a very long form review then uh, I shall bid you farewell and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time if not on a uh, slightly shorter video. So what uh, what is the format of the vid video going to be? Well as usual it's going to take the same format as these uh, these videos always take. We're going to have a little talk about the real Cessna 414 first of all, so you give you an intro into what this aircraft is all about. We're then going to have a look in the hangar at the external and internal visual models. We're going to have a look at some of the uh, external paint schemes that you can get for this aircraft, including some add-on free ones that I've picked up. Uh, then we're going to jump into the sim properly and uh, do a review flight, which is going to include measured climbs, general handling, uh, high altitude performance, it's going to include uh, some emergency drills, it also includes some circuits as well as a, a short navigational leg uh, including a, a real engine failure and single engine performance and handling. We'll then pull the airplane up and come to some kind of conclusion and I'll uh, give my opinion on the airplane and whether I think it is worth the purchase price. Just one last little bit of backstory before I dive straight into the history of the airplane. Uh, I am a uh, real world um, commercial flying instructor is my full-time profession. Uh, I teach on multi-engine aircraft, I teach instrument ratings, PPLs, pretty much everything apart from flying instructor ratings basically. Um, I have quite a lot of experience on lots of different types of aeroplanes. However, uh, I don't have any experience on this particular aeroplane, not at least flying it. I have ridden in the back of one of these a bunch of times. So I do have a little bit of experience. I have um, spoken quite extensively to uh, two chaps who used to fly one of these on a very regular basis, who used to own one. So I do have a bit of background knowledge. I am also going to pull in um, a nice gentleman who um, is one of my friends and former colleagues from uh, a previous job who flies Cessna Twins, or at least used to fly Cessna Twins for a living, who has flown all sorts of different uh, aircraft of this nature and is able to give a much uh, much better real-world perspective than I'm able to give. So hopefully between us we'll be able to uh, to give you uh, a pilot's real-world perspective on, on how re uh, realistic this representation of this aeroplane is. Okay, I think I've uh, chatted on for long enough. So let's crack on with uh, we're talking about what the, the real Cessna 414 is all about. So this is a uh, light twin-engine aeroplane built by, of course, Cessna, the, one of the world's most famous uh, GA aircraft companies. First flew in 1968, so it's rather old despite the fact it looks quite futuristic. Um, however, this is the improved version called the 414 Alpha Chancellor, uh, and this particular version came out in 1978. Now, it's basically a pressurized version of an earlier aeroplane called the Cessna 401. 
Um, so obviously it's had various modifications to the fuselage to accommodate pressurization. Uh, it's slightly more rounded uh, in terms of cross section. It's got these uh, these big oval windows that are quite uh, quite distinctive. Although the, the 401 does have the same sort of windows, but it's been modified to uh, to take uh, pressurization, which is its big kind of USP because really it's it's designed to appeal to owners of unpressurized twin engine airplanes without the kind of added costs which usually comes with one of these larger cabin class airplanes. It can seat six to eight people. So generally the sort of market you'd be looking for with this aircraft would be small scale air charter or air cargo, high value cargo operations, uh, medical flights, um, all those sorts of things. Or indeed the kind of owner who needs a, a larger, more comfortable airplane to, to fly around, maybe his family in or friends or whatever. It's based upon the fuselage of the Cessna 421, which is an even larger, um, more powerful uh, version of this aircraft. Very similar looking, but it's got uh, geared engines is probably the most significant uh, difference and a different wing. Uh, this one uses the, the wing straight off the Cessna 401, though. Um, it's a low wing cantilever monoplane with the conventional tail units, of course. It's powered by, uh, now originally it was powered by two um, 310 horsepower Continental TSIO 520J engines which are horizontally opposed air-cooled aero engines a very typical sort of item um, now this particular version has a, a slight upgrade on that but i'll get into that in a second um, the chancellor upgrade so the upgrade to this particular version included a, a redesigned tail profile and a slightly longer fuselage with a, a longer nose which uh, contains a large baggage compartment which we'll we'll see once we get into the sim and start to start looking around so the Cessna 414 has been around for quite a uh, quite a while. It's quite a complex aeroplane. It's quite a nice, comfortable aeroplane. You can almost stand up inside it as opposed to something like, for example, the 310, which we reviewed in our last in-depth review video, which is much more like a traditional light aircraft where you kind of get in and out, out of it like a car. This is, you're kind of getting into that territory where you're getting close to to almost like business aviation aircraft where you climb up a nice little air stair step and you get in the cabin and there's a tea maker in the back and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a toilet in here as well, uh, which kind of doubles up as a seat, which is a little bit odd when you think about it. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, th this is kind of a, a, a class above um, a proper, a true light aircraft. It's almost halfway in between something like a, a King Air executive transport and uh, a new sort of traditional light aircraft. Now, I did mention that this, this particular aeroplane has a, a bit of an upgrade over a standard 414, and that's because it has what's called the RAM 4 conversion. Now, the RAM conversions for these particular Cessnas are engine rebuilds and aerodynamic upgrades, which aim to improve and enhance the performance of the aircraft and also enhance the efficiency. Now, what the RAM conversion involves is completely rebuilding the engine with new uh, push rods, crankshafts, cylinders with uh, nickel coatings to make them a lot more hard wearing um, it aims to up the horsepower so the turbochargers and uh, the intakes for the turbochargers the plenum intakes are all different and redesigned to help um, the cooling of the air coming in and also to provide a ram effect which adds a little bit of boost to the uh, to the turbochargers so overall the effect is basically the engines become more long lasting more reliable but also more powerful so this ups the horsepower up to between 325 and 335 brake horsepower. Now, I've had a look through the documentation for, for this particular model. I don't know exactly which model of engines this aircraft has. If it has been made available somewhere, please post it in the comments because I really would like to know. But I'm assuming they're the 325 horsepower variants, which are the most common. So I've based all my performance calculations on the 325 horsepower variants of the engines. This particular aeroplane also has other RAM items added to it, most notably uh, the large winglets. You can see, uh, well, hang on, let me, uh, let me show you properly. Yeah, those big winglets standing up on the end of the, uh, the wings. The wing of this aeroplane is actually really quite efficient. It's quite a low drag airframe. You can see the engine and cells are very flat and smooth. There's not much sticking out underneath. The, the uh, fuselage is very sleek and uh, well-rounded. So it's a very slippy aeroplane with quite a, uh, an efficient wing and adding the winglets to that and also the other improvements that come with the RAM aerodynamics mods uh, all serve to enhance that even further.
So the Cessna 414, very interesting, quirk, well, slightly quirky aeroplane. And we'll get onto that a little bit later. But for the most part, a uh, really interesting aeroplane to be bringing into Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's something that we've not really had before. Um, we've had light aircraft and we've had big airliners, but nothing in this sort of class. So it's really kind of cornered the market at the moment. And FlySimware have really gone out of their way to model this thing to a really high degree of accuracy, which uh, hopefully I'll be able to showcase in this video. Right, so that's enough about the real aeroplane. Let's crack on with having a look at the, the visuals at work here. Now, it's been slowly kind of rotating around in the hangar as uh, I've been chatting away, and hopefully you've had a good look at, uh, at the textures and the reflections and all the rest of it while that's been happening. But I'll just slowly spin it around so you can have a look at that. And I must say, this is an unbelievable looking aeroplane. I do believe the chaps who did the, uh, the external modeling of this thing, or at least the texture work, are the same guys that work on Carinado's external models. And you can really tell because, I mean, they are probably the best looking aeroplanes in the simulator. And this is right up there with them. This is absolutely uh, stunning in terms of the visual model. It looks exactly right. The proportions are all spot on. And the textures and the detail is just brilliant. And I'll, I'll show you when we get, uh, when we get out into the simulator but you can pop open all of the the maintenance doors and stuff for the engines you can have a look all the engines are all modeled correctly the exhausts and, and all that you can all you can see all of that uh, and you can get the camera really close and look up inside things like the the landing gear base you can see the the taxi light here on the nose wheel leg is has been replaced by an led one and you can see the individual leds on that light there and it's, it's just a little bit of reflection on the glass it's absolutely spot on you can see the stickers and the uh the heated uh anti-icing strips on the the leading edge of the prop something that's quite quirky about the the 414 it's actually got turned over tips on the blades i believe that's something to do with noise reduction uh it just kind of looks like you've struck the props on the ground but it's actually supposed to be like that um you can see all the little vortex generators down the leading edge here you can see the static wicks on the on the tips there unbelievable uh, level of, uh, of accuracy and detail and attention to detail. You can see the, the calipers there on the brakes and the brake disc. And it, it's brilliant. It's as good as anything in Microsoft Flight Simulator easily. Now you can see that uh, the color scheme that we've got here is um, pretty traditional for, for a Cessna Twin. It's also uh, quite sort of dull. It's not super reflective, shiny, brand new looking. It's pretty representative of, of what most 414s if you come across one in real life that's probably more than likely what it's going to look like uh, it's quite a large airplane at the end of the day they're quite hard to wash unless you've got uh, well a ladder and a lot of spare time so most of the time they're not going to look absolutely pin sharp and new they're quite large so they're often not hangered um, so yeah a slightly worn look is probably the most accurate you could uh, you could come up with with this airplane but i'll show you some other color schemes which do aim to represent a, a shiny new uh, image before i do go inside and start to show you what the cockpit looks like just a brief note on how many of these parts on the on the outside of the airplane are animated now i did say the um the engine uh, the sort of maintenance doors cowling flaps on the sides of the engine are all um openable or animated from the uh, the little efb that you get in the cockpit but you also get all sorts of other things as well like the heat exchanger scoops on the leading edge of the wing you can just about see them here uh, they're animated and they move depending on uh, what uh, air conditioning settings you've got set up the cowl flaps are all present and correct and moving um, the uh, de-icing boot system is all animated and works properly uh, obviously the props uh, feather and, and all the rest of that kind of stuff so not only is this an amazing looking model there's also a huge number of animated oh the uh, all the nose baggage doors work um the nacelle baggage doors work the cabin door uh, works the quarter lights for the um for the cockpits uh, the little quarter light opening windows uh, open up and will open up in exactly the way they they supposed to to work and and the cabin door and all the rest of it it's really 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 in depth so yeah very, very in-depth uh, set of animations on this aeroplane. Very, uh, very nice indeed. So, let's have a look inside, shall we? Right, so, as you can see, it's not a, uh, a shiny glass panel in here. It is a full 
traditional analog cockpit which some of you are going to be uh, cheering for and some of you are going to be shaking your heads in despair but uh, for the most part I think these kind of cockpits are pretty popular in flight simulators. A lot of people hark after uh, the challenge of flying an aeroplane with this kind of fit and this is what we've got in this particular aeroplane. Now I believe what Fly Simware did when they made this aircraft is one of their development team actually owns one of these so what they did is pretty much take that exact aeroplane and just put it in Microsoft Flight Simulator so all the instrumentation uh, equipment fit and all the rest of it is lifted straight from a real-world Cessna 4 and 4 so um, that's uh, how they came up with the choice of interior colors uh, and also the instrument fit as well. Now that said, there is quite a lot of variation in, in, in terms of the navigational fit in this aeroplane that you can customize to your own uh, heart's desire. So I will uh, get onto that a little in a second. I'll just show you what kind of things you can pop in there uh, once I've gone briefly through the cabin. But as you can see, uh, very, very well modeled interior, just as good as the outside of the aircraft, all of the switches here. And pretty much every single system on this aeroplane works and is modeled. Uh, and we'll show that once we get onto the actual review flight and uh, lovely uh, six pack impl uh, instrument panel here we've got a, a fuel computer which is fully modeled it all works autopilot system which i believe is based on the standard microsoft flight simulator autopilot but mostly custom so it does a lot of uh, advanced uh, uh, well advanced it, it does a lot more complicated and uh, and complex things without uh, without screwing up and it's uh, it's also able to uh, to represent uh, the real um, Form 4's autopilot much more effectively than the default item can. All of these instruments, I believe, are fully uh, fully custom and again, like I said, modeled after the ones fitted to a real, uh, real Form 4. The air conditioning system is fully operational and there is a, uh, a little uh, mini game, as I like to call it, uh, with a, uh, a climate slider on the, the EFB that comes up when you're in flight. Um, where you can monitor the temperature of your cabin and uh, operate the heaters and air conditioning system in order to keep your uh, virtual passengers happy. There's also all sorts of little moving uh, cubby holes and items in here, cup holders and all kind of stuff uh, that just help to increase the immersion. Um, so overall, I think the interior of this airplane is as good as anything we've had in Microsoft Flight Simulator to date. It is absolutely fantastic. You can see the little air stair retracted there. Um, and all the other different bits and bobs. Oh, the, all the lights, by the way, in here uh, are all clickable, so you can turn them all on in flight. Uh, the lighting effects I will uh, get onto when we uh, start talking about the airplane in the simulator, but th they are, for the most part, absolutely brilliant. And so there we go, the interior of the Cessna 414. Right. So let's come back outside, and I'm just going to show you uh, some of the liveries that come with this aircraft. You can see that there's all sorts of different variants here. Now there's only four liveries that come with this aeroplane base, which is quite quite a low amount I'd imagine, but honestly given the number of uh, third-party add-on liveries that are already out there on uh, good old flightsim.to, I wouldn't worry too much about finding a livery that, that, uh, that is to your liking. But uh, anyway, this is the first one, uh, November 427 Romeo Charlie, the traditional uh, looking outfit here. 414 X-ray, X-ray great reg on this one. And the good old uh, white and uh, blue colour scheme, which I'm always a, a bit of a fan of. It's quite a mo modern looking uh, scheme here, but it's still slightly sort of, it's got that matte look to it that uh, looks like an aeroplane that's kind of been, been left outside a little bit. Uh, November 100 Juliet Delta, another white and blue, this time with a golden red stripe up the side of it. Very nice looking, uh, clean, executive looking colour scheme. And then we've got five November 5 Alpha Mike. All November registered aircraft. Uh, I believe uh, you're most likely to come across these aeroplanes on the November registered just generally because fuel prices are a lot cheaper in the US and these things drink fuel. So you're unlikely to come across them in uh, in Europe. There, there are definitely a few knocking around. As I said, I um, I knew a couple of old chaps who, who owned one and, and flew one around. So they are they do exist, but they uh, they are quite a bit rarer. Now, just as an example, I've downloaded a few of the uh, the free um, add-on liveries that you can find out there on uh, flightsim.to. And we've got a German example here, um, DICOM, which, as you can see, has had a bit of a polish because uh, this one has the full 
mirrored, uh, almost mirrored shine on the on the fuselage, and it looks absolutely gorgeous. You can really see as as much as I respect the fact that they've uh, they've gone for realism with the the sort of semi matte finish. This really brings out just how good the texture qualities on this aeroplane are when you have more of a gloss finish. Uh, another German registered aeroplane here. I'll put the links to these in the description, by the way, if uh, any of you fancy downloading these. And we have, finally, another November registered aeroplane. I absolutely love this one. I think this looks stunning. White and blue and black and grey combo. Really nice with the, the full uh, glossy colour scheme. So, yeah, there we go. Right, I'm going to shut up uh, babbling on in a second, but first, before I do that, I'm just going to show you the, the different instrument fits that you can have in this aircraft. So we've already seen the GNS 530. Um, now, what we can also fit to this aeroplane is the GTN 750. That's the PMS GTN 750, so we can pop inside and see that. And we can see the two units here. This is my favourite uh, instrument fit for not just this aeroplane, but for pretty much anything in my soft flight simulator. I really like this. And also, uh, I've paid for the premium version. I, I like it so much. So I, I usually try and fit it to uh, to every aircraft I, I possibly can. There's also the uh, GTN XI unit, which uh, some of you will probably prefer to the PMS version. And it's uh, capable of being fitting as well. And as you can see, it kind of rejigs the cockpit a little bit. It adds the uh, the working title autopilot system um, along with the uh, the units themselves. Uh, moves the fuel computer up here and, uh, and a few other small differences. So uh, yeah, very uh, very good choice of different navigational systems depending on what your personal preference is. So that is all I have to say really about uh, this aircraft in the hangar. Let's crack on and get into the simulator and uh, have a fly around. Right, hello everyone, and here we are into the simulator now at uh, our usual haunt of Doncaster Sheffield Airport on uh, on one of the stands, I think it's a stand 17, something like that, with a, uh, a wonky Piper Arrow park next to us, doing a brilliant job of uh, looking very unrealistic. Um, <laughs> but as promised, I have uh, a colleague with me today, a friend and colleague, I'd like to say, um, in the aeroplane with me, has a lot more experience in, with Cessna Twins than I do. Uh, you may recognise him from our last uh, Cessna Twin video, the 310 review. Uh, but for those of you tuning in for the first time, Nathan, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, uh, thanks Kitty. Uh, yeah, uh, me and Kitty have known each other for quite a few years now. Uh, if you watched the 310 video, I apologise for the audio last time. I'm hoping the audio will be better this time. I have got a fair bit of experience of flying Cessna uh, twin aeroplanes. I fly, fly, currently fly the uh, King Air uh, 200 series, but before that I used to fly uh, 310s, uh, 402 uh, Bravo and a B404, which this 404 Alpha is very similar to a uh, 402 and 404 really. It's a bit of a uh, cut and short uh, version of it. The tail plane is the same as a 402B. The cop is very similar to the 402 and 404, and the wings very similar to the 404 with the digital upgraded RAM engines. So, I've not actually flown this one, I've flown in the older 414. Um, so, to give you a general overview, the best we can, there's not many of these flying around now, it's easy to rent or get a hold of. So, I'll try and give you my best experience that I have, uh, and that's it really. Brilliant, thank you very much. So, we're going to be working together as best we can. Nathan's going to be telling me when I do something stupid and uh, give me a virtual uh, smack on the head. And hopefully between us we can give you a fairly realistic representation of what it's like to fly one of these aeroplanes. And obviously uh, reviewing the product and letting you know what's realistic and what isn't. So, first of all, before we crack on with actually flying, we'll have a quick look around the aeroplane. You can see we've got all the hatches and doors open now. And there are a huge number of these little animated bits that you can pop open using the... Um, using the iPad thing here, uh, electronic flight bag, whatever you want to call it, in the uh, corner of the cockpit. And you can see we've got some passengers on board the aeroplane and some baggage in there as well. And you can see the, uh, those lovely six-cylinder engines sticking out of the, the cowlings with the, uh, the maintenance doors open. Uh, we've got a, a ground power unit keeping us, uh, keeping us charged up while we play around on the ground. Uh, we've got the tie downs and all the other bits and pieces attached. We probably have those uh, disconnected at this point. That that is just so distracting. I, mean, I hope it goes away soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we've 
Yeah, it's just it's just adding to it so much at the moment. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it's looking basically as if we've just popped open all the doors and stuff, and we're uh, we're doing a, almost like a maintenance inspection at the moment. So let's uh, let's close some of these up. Or do you want to do you want to have a look at those? Um, do you want to talk people through some of these uh, features and, and and the dipsticks and things yeah, like that? Probably, yeah. The, yeah. Do they? Yeah. How are they looking in terms of the real aeroplanes? I think the, uh, the engine cowling uh, looks very realistic. Um, I don't know if you can zoom right in. There is like a piano hinge, uh, a bit like the arrow at the bottom yeah. of a cowling. I don't know if you can zoom in. And sh hang it shows on, hang on. Real. So th this is something that you can do. There we go. So if you... Okay, so it's not, it's not bad. Uh, there would have been a bit more of a zigzag piano hinge at the top of that uh, uh, door, I suppose, that's this, uh, hanging this down. This edge here, yeah. And, uh, obviously, generally it's pretty good. The cylinders uh, look really good. The exhaust system and the hoses and the wiring, that's uh, exactly what would be with the ice light as well, underneath the uh, little fear in there as yep, well, um, by, by the wing. Uh, the dipstick we said earlier is actually the right shape. Um, it's such a shame you can't see any oil on it. That would have been a really cool feature if you could see a bit of fresh... Um, yeah, I don't, I'll put that... No, you can't do that. I'll try to put the flashlight on and, and see if you can see it with that. But yeah, it, it's, it would be nice to see a, a line where the oil level is. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about uh, maintenance features and things like that because obviously one of the main things we need to be talking about Nathan is how this matches up to the other Cessna twin aeroplane um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator right now the the 310 yeah. so that's one of the main features of the 310 obviously you've got lots of maintenance features and things like that and we'll uh, we'll, t we'll talk about that how this uh, aeroplane matches up in that respect as well a little bit later on uh, but yeah really so like the, uh, sorry sorry if, uh, no, no, in, 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 the, uh, in the baggage doors uh, you see like a little placard maximum baggage so if we zoom into the uh, front nose baggage store. Uh, that placard is absolutely perfect, so exactly how it would look. Uh, and also we're talking about the uh, wing locker doors this time, uh, oh, open yep. at the right angle. Yeah, uh, hang on. A, a little, little bugbear of last time in the, uh, the 310, that's exactly how it would look. Uh, the light's in the right place in the baggage bay. Um, I don't know if you zoom into that light as well um, on, on the hang video. On, hang on, I'm going to have to uh, put us around here, that might give us a better view. There we go. Yep. Um, the latch looks perfect as well, um, and the key where the key position is uh, at the back, uh, and the Olio as well. It keeps the uh, also structure, I say. Oh yeah, um, yeah, keeps of the door open. Um, yeah, yeah. So you got a you got a little gas strut on this to keep it open, which is uh, I'd imagine pretty handy in the real aeroplane. Absolutely. Oh, well, two are a bit older, not maintaining very well. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah. And a turn that will slam on your hands <laughs> a few times to unload and unload. Uh, but no, I think it's modelled really well. Um, Probably slightly better from what I've seen the three ten so far. Yeah, they've, they've obviously done. Yeah, I I would say they've done a they've gone to a massive amount of effort to make all of this stuff look very very realistic. I believe what the developer yeah. did is um, one of the uh, people on the development team has one of these aeroplanes and he's basically just gone out and represented that exact single aeroplane to the highest level of fidelity he possibly can. So he's oh, he's great. really gone out there and, and put like every. <laughs> yeah, uh, on a serious video review. Uh, yeah, very, 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 <laughs> very serious product review. Right. Uh, so yeah, so they've gone to a huge amount of effort to do all of the uh, to show all these little visual features, like all the doors and things like that. And uh, one of the great things about uh, this airplane, it's got a really well represented cabin. So if we pop back into the uh, into the cabin, which we can do, thankfully, uh, we've got these little. Um, auto smart cam targets thing that we can click here and we can pop back into the cabin and uh, live the life of a Cessna 414 passenger for a little bit. As I mentioned, my only uh, experience of, of a real 414 is, is sitting back here and looking out one of these windows. So this is very familiar to me. And pop the little tray table out and the, uh, the cup holders and all that kind of stuff. But of course we're about to take off, so we can't have that uh, out for takeoff, as we all know. Incredibly dangerous. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, I've also got a photo of a 414 uh, uh, external uh, view somewhere. So I'll try and cut that into the video. Yeah, show yeah. People how similar that window is. Yeah. Uh, I've actually got um, London, the city of London in the background, I think. I don't know if it's Biggin Hill. Quite a nice uh, trip. So overall, I would say the, um, the the looks of the aeroplane, we'll try not to look at the, the spinning arrow just over there. But yeah, overall, the looks of the aeroplane, I think, are absolutely spot on. They've done a brilliant job with the uh, with the graphical model of the aeroplane, both inside and out. But obviously, we'll we'll get to that in the conclusion. But so far, so good. Uh, right, so let's uh, let's start popping some doors closed, shall we? So we'll uh, shut yeah. the nose doors and the wing lockers, get rid of the plugs and the tie-downs. 
static wicks, piece of covers, and uh, I'll get rid of the GPU now. It's rather noisy. Uh, fuel caps, oil doors, hydraulic reservoir, and the engine doors can all come closed. Uh, we've got a, a rather lovely uh, co-pilot sitting next to us here. Um, but just for the sake of being able to see out the, the right-hand side of the, aer the aeroplane a little bit better, we'll, uh, we'll make her go away for now. As you can see, you've got these lovely uh, lamb's wool seats in here, which are uh, pretty faithful to what the, the real aeroplane has, depending, yep. on obviously, on, uh, on how old it is and uh, how many people's butts have, have uh, sat in there and worn them out. But these ones look uh, look pretty comfy, definitely. Uh, definitely a, a little bit maybe too warm for uh, today, <laughs> today's weather conditions, but uh, certainly very uh, very close to what the real aeroplane has. Cow flaps, we haven't looked at them yet. So oh, they, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, cow flaps in this aeroplane. It's a little bit different to the 310. Um, so the 310 has interior cow flaps. That's right, yeah. So it's, um, the visa look the same as the 402 um, underneath. So yeah, the one's underneath and uh, the bottom of the control column. And you pull them out to close them and push them into uh, them open as they are now. So yeah, so we can uh, we can pull them out there. So one of the things they yeah. they partially that they're not kind of fully out or fully in. You can have them partially open, and they do yeah, you, you model correctly. Them open or closed technically, so you want actually lock them closed or lock them open. You ah, want right. actually have them half. Uh, but yeah, it, you can actually move the lever like that. So the lever movement is correct. But in in normal operation, you'd have them just open or close. Really. You would just have them open or close, yeah. right? Okay, cool. But it's it's good to see that uh, they have actually modelled them so they the position of the lever corresponds to the the position of the flap on the outside of the aeroplane. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, other yeah. other little animations which I find really really good are things like the uh, this sun visor here, which comes out to every angle you could possibly imagine. Um, you can rotate it around like that. You can slide it backwards and forwards, and obviously you can de deploy it like that. So I think that's that's really good, and obviously it, it corresponds to the outside model as well. So that's all yeah. very uh, very good indeed. Right. So I think we've chatted on uh, enough about that. Should we start to talk about uh, what we're going to be doing on this flight? So yeah. as usual with these uh, with with these flights, we're going to do a little bit of a performance modif uh, performance check. So we've got some documentation for the aircraft. It's a little bit complicated to get real-world data for this aeroplane because it's not a standard 414, as I mentioned in the hangar uh, segment of the video. It's a modified version with more powerful engines, better aerodynamics, all these kind of stuff. So the climb performance and cruise performance, all the rest of it, is a little bit different to the stock aircraft. So we've, we've had to find some, some documentation. It's not quite as good as the original stuff. Uh, and we're just going to do our best with it. Uh, we've set the aeroplane up today uh, with a bunch of passengers, to show you the guys back there, and some cargo in there, and enough fuel to bring us up. We're just a little bit over our maximum takeoff weight at the moment. We've uh, we've calculated for a bit of fuel for the taxi and the run-up. So we're going to be taking off pretty much at maximum takeoff weight. Uh, and Nathan's got all the figures ready to go when we're in the climb, so we can show that. Uh, we're also going to be taking the aeroplane up, because of course this is a pressurised aircraft, we're going to be taking it up to... Uh, an altitude where we can show you that pressurization working and also because it's turbocharged and because the developer has gone to an enormous amount of effort to properly model the, the um, engine handling of a turbocharged aeroplane we're going to be taking it up to the critical altitude so we're going to be taking it up past 21,000 feet so we can show you how all that stuff works then we're going to have a little bit of a, a, uh, a play around with uh, maybe an emergency descent down to a lower altitude so we can then run through the usual set of general handling uh, maneuvers that we do on these reviews. Then we'll be doing a visual joint into our usual uh, target of Nottingham, flying some visual circuits, including an engine failure after takeoff drill uh, and an asymmetric circuit to land. We'll then pull in and uh, have a little chat about what we think about the airplane. Does that sound good to you, Nathan? Sounds great, yep. Fantastic. Yeah. Right, let's crack on. So are you ready with the checklist, sir? I am, yes. Brilliant. Right, let's crack on. Okay, so uh, before starting engines, uh, parking brake set? Uh, parking brake is set, yes it is. Uh, Pre-flight we've done. Uh, cabin doors, latch down secure. Oh, okay, hang on. Let's, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the camera because we've got a camera thing for this. Um, okay. So if we, hang on, instrument. And we go to inside cabin door. There we go. Excuse me, madam. Oh, there's, there's bloody two of them now. <laughs> okay, there we go. We can see the little green uh, line coming in there, showing that the... Uh, the okay, so that, 
I say that top door doesn't lock quite right, but it's not not bad. So oh, right. that, that when it locks, it actually the it's an over sensor lock. So uh, that lever will come almost all the way down uh, vertically before you stow it uh, to a ninety degree position there. Right. Um, so that's just uh, something to note. Close, but not quite. Right. Yeah. Okay. So door secure. Okay. Uh, so seat belt harnesses. We're not we're com sitting comfortably at home. Yes, seat belt on. I've got um, a Very nice. Emergency cross feed shut off uh, open. So if you go between fuel selector valves, there's uh, should be a square. Uh, it's red. It should be normally black. Uh, well, actually, it could be red actually. So uh, it's basically pushed down to the floor, which it is. The shut off yep. is to pull up. Um, so that's that's good. In that position. Uh, so, yeah. So down to the floor. Um, you always trip over it and you get in and out of the cockpit because normally you leave it in the pool shut off position. And <laughs> right. you always trip over it. Um, the fuel selectors, main tanks, so left and right to the green position. Okay, yep, main tank selected. Cow flaps open. Uh, cow flaps are open. Uh, your damp uh, should be off. Yep, and it is. The, uh, I'll put a battery on, yeah, I'm sure that needs to go on at some point. Yeah, let's, let's, let's stick that on, that'd be handy. There we go, yeah. battery's on. It's not uh, the greatest it. checklist, but we'll get, we'll get, we'll get yeah, there. We'll get there. I'll, I'll stick some nav lights on as well, let everybody know we're under power. Okay, uh, mixtures full rich. Okay, mixture set full rich. Oh, that's a good noise. That's, a, that's exactly that's right, that is, with the clicks. That's not that. That's the proper Cessna twin yeah. clicky noise, isn't it? It is. Uh, props uh, high RPM? Yep, props set to max RPM. Okay, so um, it was the same as the 310 to uh, start the aircraft, so the order mag's on. Okay, so hang on, get rid of that. Move the gang bar up, all the mags on, yep. Yep, it'll be left engine first because it's a, um, obviously the battery's on the left hand side, so the short is throw to the uh, battery cable. Okay. Um, the uh, throttles, um, I always uh, push the throttles fully open. Oh, okay, fully open. And then the left hand side, give the left a uh, probably a, a four or five second prime uh, to the left. Okay, done. And then bring the, uh, the left hand throttle back to uh, about a half an inch open. Okay, bring that's about about there. Yep. Um, and then we'll go to the um, engine uh, start switch. Right. Here we go. Okay, so we got oil pressure, starter enunciators yep. out, and we RPM's running away a little bit. So I'm assuming a thousand RPM is what we want to be going for. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. That sounds pretty nice to be there. Isn't it? Yeah, I, I think the noises are brilliant. The sounds are very, very really nice. Good. Yeah. But we'll we'll have um, a, a better listen of that when we're actually flying around. Right. Okay. So yeah, we've got a good start. Nice price, so. Yeah. Um, so go for the uh, prime for about four or five seconds on the on the right hand side, um, and then bring the right hand throttle back to half inch and start that one. Okay, there we go, and then I'll bring the throttle back to about there, and uh, crank over the right engine. There we go. I love the fact that it, it doesn't fire off straight away. It, it yeah, kind of yeah. gives the feeling of uh, of cranking it into life it's really good and then it obviously the, the rpm starts off low and then as the engine starts to kind of get its legs under it, it builds up again which is, is really cool i really like that uh, anyway yeah, we've got all the pressure green and with the uh, we've got the starter warning out we still have the alternators off so we've got the alternator out warnings on here but other than that it's all good yeah so if you were, uh, also as well i noticed in the um on the le left hand bottom left of the panel the uh resolution you have two red doors as we talked about in the 310 video when we went out on the left and right as well as you start which is really good so it uh, indicates we've got um a vacuum source from both um both engines good yeah that's so uh, a little red knife so we uh so now we've got the fuel pump to low we should be uh bringing the fuel pump back um towards you yeah, um, the left and right alternator, we should turn them on, my iPad, uh, turn on. What's that, sorry? Left and right alternator, turn on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, left and right alternator, on. One, one right, so that's my my bad. And then no, uh, right. I'm going for the, uh, a mag check now. Right, okay, so just a quick mag check, drop no stop. Yeah. 
Okay, so we're not looking for any specific RPM here. We are just checking that the engine doesn't cut out when we switch to uh, each individual magneto or set of uh, set of spark plugs, basically. So there we go. It's all good. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so um, hey, the next one. Right. Uh, this is a switch on my yoke, so I'll flick the switch. It's just down there, the little toggle. You can hear the beepy noise there. Perfect. Lovely, perfect. So as you can see, we've got two of the uh, lovely PMS 750 and uh, Garmin 750 mods in this aeroplane. I've got the paid version, but there's obviously a free version, which is really, really good. So I definitely recommend picking this up. Uh, certainly if you're going to fly with, with, with this aeroplane because of the sort of flights you're going to be doing, you're more than likely going to be uh, doing slightly longer flights, IFR. You need a, a good nav system. So this is a lot better than the default stuff that comes with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Right, okay, uh, the avionics are on, sir. Okay, uh, the exterior lights are required, so we have some nabs or whatever. Yeah, we've got, uh, we got, we got the nabs on. The, um, accessory switches on, um, so there's a coffee machine if we've got one, uh, or anything like that. Uh, uh, the are, are set uh, to leave my alpha the taxi in. Okay. Uh, radios are set as required. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose we can put some, uh, we'll put the ILS at Doncaster in just so we can show that off. Uh, and we can see it's going on. We've got a uh, slaved HSI here as our primary instrument. And on the, hang on, on the nav 2, we have this more traditional omni bearing indicator over here. See, we're getting a 2 indication. And we can spin it round. We're getting a, a stable signal from the, uh, the localizer. No glide slope because we're too far away from the runway. And a similar sort of indication from uh, from this one here. We're going to use runway 20 because it's pointing in roughly the right direction. So let's uh, spin the CDI round onto uh, onto runway heading, and then I'm going to use my honeycomb on uh, the heading bug. There we go, because I'm going to spin it a little bit faster with that. Uh, line that up. Okay, so uh, ADF. I suppose we should probably put something on there. Two, three. There we go. So in addition to the fancy Garmin electronics, you've got all the uh, the sort of old-fashioned nav radio systems you might expect in an aircraft like this. Your DME is down here. It can be slaved to either nav 1 uh, or nav 2. And obviously your ADF over there, which uh, comes out onto this, uh, this very nice uh, relative bearing indicator, which is always a luxury in these kind of aeroplanes, isn't it, Nathan? Usually uh, you're yeah. stuck with a fixed card compass or something rubbish like that. But uh, yeah, I've got uh, absolutely love it pretty good uh, steam uh, steam indication in this aeroplane it's not like a, a glass panel g1000 uh, setup it's a proper old school cockpit just with a little bit of a, a new uh, a new gps setup there right so the avionics radios are all uh, as good as, as i think we're going to get them Right, okay, I've just turned the headphone simulation on in the sim there, so you probably should hear it a little bit better. I just wanted to leave it off for the start so you could hear those engine noises, but uh, now we've got a slightly uh, slightly quieter cockpit going on now, so you should hear us a little bit better. Right, if you'd like to carry on with uh, from where we were, Nathan. Yep, so you want to give the, uh, the flaps a cycle, uh, just make sure they uh, operate full and free between the three positions. Right, so um, there's our check positions. Check that side of the model if they have a uh, travelling, uh, okay. I'm doing that as well. We've got our two aeroplanes still doing uh, ballet, but we'll yeah. pop outside and I'll select the flaps in stages. So we've got split flaps, similar to the 310s. Yep, yeah, and same as the older form board, well, the years, but I've just um, the one before the form board, uh, A. Okay, there we go. So there's all three stages, and then up in stages. Very nice. Did that look all uh, all good to you, sir? Yeah, I think so. yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, normally with a split flap, uh, status swing, you'll take off with uh, flap zero and just use the flaps for uh, slowing down at the end. Brilliant. Right. The good thing about the hard flip flapping gear system in this, uh, compared to the 310 we've reviewed before, is you've got a higher limiting speeds, uh, so you're not able to slow the aircraft down as much with the, uh, the power. You can actually drop the flapping gear quite early and get yourself down uh, quite nicely if you get in a bit of trouble or ATC mess you about. Yeah, so it's, it's really good for <laughs> height management. Yeah, I mean... I've <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who's who's flown IFR in real life in a in a light aircraft will know the eternal struggle of uh, being held at the wrong altitude by uh, by ATC. But we'll we'll not start <laughs> we'll not start regaling people with too many stories about that. Um, no. Right, next item ready to go. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, just taxi, and uh, we'll do the uh, run up checks. Get to the hold. Brilliant. Right, taxi light on. Idle throttles. 
release parking brake, let's go. So I'm just going to give the, the rudder pedals a little uh, wiggle to make sure my rudder pedals are working okay. And then uh, we'll try and avoid this uh, nice marshaller lady. She may want to get out of the way of the left-hand engine though. And you can see the, the little uh, phasing indicator on the RPM uh, indicator there is, is showing us uh, when the engines aren't quite uh, lined up in terms of RPM, which is very handy when you're in the cruise. Obviously not a huge deal of, uh, of use when you're taxiing around on the ground because um, mo as, as with most uh, multi-engine aeroplane pilots, I tend to use quite a lot of asymmetric thrust when I'm steering around on the ground. So uh, pretty irrelevant really for what we're doing right now. So we can do yeah. a quick check of our instruments. So we're turning left, numbers decreasing, and numbers decreasing on the two instruments here, numbers decreasing on the whiskey compass up here. Uh, and the coordinator's working in the correct sense, needles left, balls right. So it's always a good yeah. idea when you're going to be, certainly when you're going to be flying IFR, not that we're really going to be doing too much IFR today, but it's always a good idea to check your instruments as you're taxiing out. Uh, something Have to note about the, uh, the taxiing performance of this plane, uh, in my opinion, I think they've got it really spot on it it feels heavy to taxi around like it doesn't sort of shoot forward it requires a reasonable amount of power and a reasonable amount of braking i say as i completely whiff up the brakes there but I'll just give them a poke there to try and calibrate them properly um yeah so that the ground handling feels really really good on this airplane and it feels like uh, the real one's probably quite heavy to taxi would you go with that nathan yeah i think we have a uh, twins similar to this i've uh I've flown and taxied, so I'd say it uh, seems pretty accurate to be honest. And just, yeah, everything I've seen so far from what we've seen previously in this, uh, before we came in this recording, uh, looks looks really good to be honest. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. There we go. And it's, it's really nice to be sort of taxiing around an aeroplane where you can kind of do a nice smooth taxi. Some of the other Microsoft Flight Simulator planes, you kind of find yourself jerking all over the place because they're really yeah. kind of sensitive, whereas this really does feel like a, a big uh, a, a relatively big heavy airplane which is really good yeah that's well we, we don't airplane. yeah a proper airplane we don't really have much uh, wind but we will sort of pretend to put it into into wind uh, pop yep. the mark brake on reset a thousand rpm and i think we're about ready for our power checks okay so we have pocket brake uh, set um all the pilot we can't really can we check that on the ground in the sim we try uh, that yet? we can uh, give continue. it a go I'm not sure if it's gonna how it's gonna perform but uh, let's go with heading and spin the heading bug around and then go autopilot on and see if it follows the card is it gonna do it no it isn't never mind you can see the flight director's working as it should but the the controls yeah. don't follow it it's, it's I think it just uses it does use a modified version but it is still at heart the Microsoft flight simulator default autopilot so unfortunately it doesn't have uh, those kind of cool features but we can check the uh, the autopilot disconnects works there we go and we'll pop the your damper and the flight director back off again uh, so we'll the uh, flight director look good as well. To be honest. I've, I've flown that particular um, AI and flight director, and that looks pretty accurate. To be honest, so yeah, that's yeah. good. And it does perform very well. So we'll, we'll use the autopilot a little bit in flight, and uh, we'll see uh, just how it kind of uh, how it matches up to, to default aeroplanes, which which often aren't the best. And, and even the 310 did something weird to us, didn't it? When uh, when we it were did, messing yeah. around with that. So that roll we'll, right as I'm like that, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, I have, like I said, I have been doing quite a lot of the flying with this uh, aeroplane doing all sorts of different stuff, fat sim and things like that in the sort of interim period while it was still in beta and uh, the autopilot has never really done anything like that to me so hopefully it won't do it today um, <laughs> Right, fingers should crossed. we uh, yeah, fingers crossed, should we, uh, should we crack on now? Yeah, so um, just do electric trim check and uh, make sure the trims are in the right place uh, as the next okay. part of the check Okay. So let's check the electric trimmer, so yeah rolling forwards rolling back and then we'll manually put it into the uh, the takeoff position there in the middle of the white square. Yeah, and there's two more just below in the centre, which will be the uh, rudder trim uh, down down the middle there. You yeah. see the white indicator in the middle, which is good. And then you've got the uh, aileron trim in the middle as well on the left, just below the, uh, the left on front. Yeah, the, see that? There we go. Look, yeah, we've got that in the right position as well. Brilliant. Happy days. Okay, uh, so that's set. Uh, flaps uh, up for takeoff. Uh, cow flaps. Yep, cow flaps uh, open. Okay, uh, ABLs and radios are set. Flight instruments we've uh, checked and uh, set them for takeoff. 
Yeah, uh, well, I suppose we can just go through those quickly. So the, the, one of the great things about this uh, this airspeed indicator gauge, it's actually got an automatic um, TAS readout on here, which will change depending on temperature and, and pressure altitude, which is really cool because obviously you're going to be flying this yeah. airplane quite high. So it's always good to know your TAS. Uh, the Attitude indicator here, like Nathan said, it's got some pretty good uh, flight director bars, which we'll see later. We've got the uh, turn coordinator incorporated into the bottom here, which is handy for when you're instrument flying. There's also a light which tells you um, when you've reached your decision height on the radar altimeter. So that's when you're concentrating hard on your attitude indicator. You've got a light that pops up here, which tells you to then look up and uh, see if you can see the, uh, the, the Rome lights. There's also a light which engages when you engage the go around mode. Uh, they work as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's good there they all work um the barrow altimeter so we've got the primary here and the backup over on the co-pilot side they're set 10 13 because it's just ISA standard today uh we've yep. got the hsi here set up with the uh, runway heading on the cdi and then i'll pop runway heading back onto the heading bug here um we've got vertical speed reading zero and turn and slip down here in the middle the doll's eye is out and uh, the ball's in the middle so i'm happy with all our flight instruments perfect okay so um Pressure uh, set, so uh, we'll set it yeah. to, what's the elevation of Doncaster? Um, elevation of Doncaster is 50 feet above ground level. So it'd be set about to uh, 500, uh, what, what we're we climbing to? Uh, oh, um, let's let's go up to, we're going up to 21,000 aren't we? So let's let's set it up. Yeah, set it to, like, yeah. Bear, uh, bear with, it'll just take a while. Higher, uh, at 22. Okay, go for 22. There we go. Okay, pressurization set. Okay, so uh, mixture rich and uh, throttle to 1700 RPM. All right, mixture rich and uh, throttle's going up. Perfect. So vacuum system, we can see we've still got the uh, suction of about five and the doll's eyes still retracted, which is good. Correct. Uh, We've got an panel is clear and accepted. There's no lights on the left hand panel, which is, which yep. is good. Nothing on there. And uh, again, of course, test. Alternators and battery meter check. So just cycle through the little left hand uh, switch, make sure okay. we've got more. Left alternator's good, right's good, and battery is not showing a draw. How many? Go to volts on the far right side, so that shows the voltage. There you go, so yep. you can see it's uh, about 28 volts. There's which is brilliant. Fantastic. Okay, uh, next in the list. Uh, sorry, uh, prop to feathering check. Okay. So, bring the prop back to the gate and uh, okay, so interestingly, um, Norman and Cessna 20 can't feather both props together. Oh, right. uh, I don't know if that's right exactly on the 4 and 4. Uh, well, I, eight. I, um, I, I wasn't actually through the feathering gate with that, so hang on. No. Because it won't actually allow me with my... So that's into the feathering gate now. Yeah, perfect. Because normally there's a little notch just with that silver bar where that silver um, icon is. Yep. Um, and that basically stops you putting both props together. Uh, normally in Tesla Twins. But I can't see that on that panel uh, in the step. So I don't know whether that's, that's right or wrong or not. I'm not sure. So yeah, there is, that little gate is there. So when I when I do this with my uh, honeycomb, it'll only let me pull it back to, to that position there, despite the fact that I do actually have the the feathering setting bound um, to the because there is a little detent on the on the honeycomb. Um, right. Okay. And, and I do have that bound, but even if I pull it all the way through that, it won't let me take it below that point there. So you do have to actually manually grab it with your mouse and pull it through the the feathering detent. So that's, right, okay. that that probably is right. Um, I, I was just pulling it all the way back to minimum RPM when I had them both together. Makes sense. Lovely stuff. Okay. Um, mag check. So okay. Mag. So now we're looking for some specific values. I'm assuming here now. Yeah, so uh, I've not actually got this on the chat that's in front of me, but generally um, no more than um, 100 RPM drop and 75 between the, the difference between the two. Okay, uh, so that's, nice. yeah, that's about 100 RPM, that's looking okay. And the other one. Again, about 100 RPM. Back to both. Left mags. Off. On the right engine. And right mag mags off on the right engine as well. Okay, mags are checked. Okay, the, um, so if you look for the alternate air, which is below the yoke, give them yeah. a, uh, a stop. 
There we go, alternate app. So just cycle these and check the uh, check the RPM yeah. doesn't change. Okay, so that's left alternate air. Looks good. Yep. And right alternate air. That's looking good. Okay, edge instruments are all in the green. Yeah, T's and P's all looking happy. And if you look at the instruments as well, the instruments, you see that nice sort of, uh, I suppose, almost a perfect, I suppose, one of them little uh, triangle shaped Frisbee things. Uh, shape, that's quite a nice yeah. thing out of court and right to look at. So if you, if you imagine that shape uh, is, a, is a good thing, it's quite nice. If you look over there and glance at it, if it doesn't look like that picture, it's quite obvious to see when something's wrong, uh, which, is, which is useful to have. Well, yeah. Nice feedback about the uh, assessors. Um, uh, then the throttles to idle. Make sure there's no stop, then back to 1000 RPM. Okay, and yeah, we're idling nicely at about, what we got, about 700 RPM. So let's go back to 1000. I'll tell you one thing we haven't done, we haven't set the fuel computer up, have we? So let's see if I can remember yep. how to do this. This thing is, is modelled pretty much exactly as it should be in real life. They've gone to some real effort to, to set this up. And it's a really great little tool because it's, uh, it not only tells you how much fuel you got on board, it also feeds into the Garmin system. And the Garmin okay. system will tell you how much fuel you're going to have at certain waypoints based on your fuel flow, which is coming from this computer here, which is really handy when you're doing long cross countries in this aeroplane. Um, yeah. So let's let's pull this up here and uh, cheat a little bit. So we know we've got 470 liters of fuel on board. Now, the annoying thing is it's in liters and the aeroplane runs in gallons. So I'm gonna cheat using my uh, conversion app that I have on my phone. So we've got, uh, 470 litres, which is going to be an equivalent of 424 US gallons. At the moment, the aeroplane only thinks we've got 45 US gallons on board. We've actually got to add 79 US gallons to this to get it at the right figure. So what we have to do is click through the functions to, to I mean, fill up is to make it full, add gallons. And we're going to, uh, we don't need to add anything on this one because we've not put more than 100 in there. So we hit that. And we go to here, and we put seven. And we go to here, and we put nine. And then once we've done that, we verify, hit enter. And now we should have our 124 gallons. Look at that, I've done it right. Unbelievable. Right, type rated on the uh, four and four any minute now. Right. <laughs> right, what's the next uh, item in the checklist, Nathan? So, uh, door and windows are locked. Yeah, I had the, the little quarter light window open just to hear the engine sound, but other than that, we're all good. And in the back, how are we doing back here, ladies and gents? You're in for a rough ride, I'm afraid. Right, that's all good. Uh, and spoilers, do we have a spoiler uh, mod? I know you can, this on part of a checklist if installed. I don't, it doesn't look like they've got a spoiler. I don't there, believe I we have spoilers on this and particular aircraft. No. no. Um, take off briefing. Okay, so it's going to be left-hand seat, uh, VFR departure 20 Doncaster, uh, wind is light and variable, uh, runway surface is dry, if we have uh, an engine failure before the point of rotation, we'll close the throttles and stop, anything after the point of rotation with insufficient uh, runway remaining below takeoff safety speed, we'll stick it back on the runway. If we've got insufficient runway remaining and uh, we're below takeoff safety speed, we'll just land straight ahead, 30 degrees left to right of the runway center line. If there's insufficient runway remaining and we are above takeoff safety speed, uh, then we will uh, take the problem into the air, we'll, we'll uh, power up, gear up, flap up, go up, we'll climb at uh, VYSE, which is 111 knots, I believe, in this airplane, where the blue line is on the airspeed indicator, and yep. uh, we'll take the aircraft around a visual circuit, because we've got lovely weather today here at Doncaster, visual circuit round to the left to land runway 20 with a mayday, uh, and all the usual precautions, obviously, if there's an engine fire, we'll probably uh, reconsider that and put the aircraft down uh, into the nearest field with the usual engine fire drills. Um, the departure we're going to be doing is just going to be straight ahead to uh, 21,000 feet, no restrictions. Let's assume ATC have been really nice to us. And uh, we're going to be doing some performance checks on the way. Any questions from you, sir? No, not at all. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's go. Brilliant. Uh, and the uh, rotate speed about 105 knots, uh, roughly, um, I guess, on this airplane. Okay, 105 knots it is. Obviously, uh, you can run the numbers on the, the official... Uh, performance charts and things like that and yeah. uh, work it out because it is uh, a large enough aeroplane to have kind of a, a variable um, rotation speed depending on how much weight you've got on board but 105 yeah. knots should be uh, fantastic for what we've got on board today right I, well, um, on, on, on approach yeah yeah 
Okay, so uh, would you pop the flight directors on for departure or just leave it off? Um, it's completely up to you, really. Uh, you, you can do. Um, put, it, put it in heading mode and, and go around if it gives you a, a pitch up to something sensible. Um, yeah, um, so, I mean, if, if we if we sort of hit heading mode here and then. Uh, is it going to give us a go around? Uh, so I'm pressing the button on my. I don't know if I've got it bound. Actually, I'm pressing the go around button on my throttles. Nothing's happening. Let's let's just stick stick it in IS and and put it in V2 uh, or VYSC. Yeah. For now that, that, so that'll, that'll be something so sensible. Yeah, IS as a requirement really. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Normally, that's just just a hangover, I guess, from the from the dash eight because you'd normally have your flight directors up for departure. Right, yeah. okay, so we're on the sensor line. So what we expect out of this is the airplane is going to accelerate pretty rapidly because it's a pretty powerful airplane, but also it's going to require quite a bit of right pedal because they are same turning engines. It's not a counter, uh, counter turning aircraft like the Seneca is. So just like the 310, unfortunately, that we didn't get in the 310, uh, we should be getting some uh, some yaw to the left that I'm going to have to counter out with the rudder. Right, okay, you ready to go, Nathan? Absolutely, let's go. Let's go for it. So I'm going to ramp the power up to about sort of 40%. Just to make sure we got no T's or P's, no warning lights. I'm going to get rid of the uh, EFB now to improve our visibility a little bit. Make sure we got uh, all the lights on. Uh, make sure the ULT, uh, altimeter is on. Altitude reporting is on the uh, transponder, and then we're going to do that there too. And then I'm going to go full power. I'm going to ramp the throttles up slowly because I don't want to over boost the uh, the turbos and I am having to put in already quite a lot of right pedal here to keep the airplane uh, on the center line obviously you can't see me doing that but you'll just have to trust it's what I'm doing uh, so yeah the yaw is definitely present and correct in this airplane and it sounds really good as well to be honest yeah it sounds uh, pretty perfect the handling is great on the pedals and they're coming up to 105 off we go, lovely and smooth, fantastic. Uh, you can see the ball going off to the side there because I'm not quite putting enough right pedal in. I'm really having to kick the kick the rudder here, which is great. It's exactly what I'd expect. Yeah, uh, we've got, we've got insufficient runway remaining now, and uh, we've got a positive rate of climb. We're about at our takeoff safety speed, so let's retract the landing here. We get uh, a brief illumination of the hydraulic pressure light on the enunciator panel there, and uh, gear up, lights out, right. And now we're in the climb. So I'm assuming, Nathan, it's going to be like the 310. We're just going to go uh, top of the greens. Yeah, top of the greens, yeah. Um, I'll probably bring the um, RPM back to 25, according to these RAM engines. So top of the green on the manual pressure. And 25 on the RPM gives you a nice cruise, cruise climb. Okay. And uh, we climb at 120 as well. It's just very uh, a bit cooling. And okay, you can probably so see over the pressure. Let's pull back to 25, 25 and pitch for 120. Just going to uh, adjust the IIS on the flight directors, so it's giving us a little bit more reliable information. Unfortunately, even if you turn all the weather off in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it doesn't turn the uh, the thermals off, so we're still getting the uh, the bumps that are coming from that. So yeah. trust me, that's that's not just my rubbish flying. That's actually Flight Sim trying to simulate uh, the conditions on a on a warm day. Uh, but other than that, the airplane is uh, is lovely and smooth, and it's quite easy to to fly accurately. I was after the board now. Uh, I probably put a prop sync on. Uh, okay. Now we're we're several thousand feet all parts on as well. And, okay. Uh, prop sync's on, and the, let's uh, go. Your damper and yep. autopilot. Okay. There we go. And then also we can get the uh, retractable uh, landing lights in whenever you're ready. Oh yeah. Okay. Well. So, oh, hang on. So let's let's uh, let's show these things off because I love these things. I think these are one of the the best things on Cessna twins. These little retractable lights here. So the lighting effects on this aeroplane are absolutely brilliant. There we go. Look at that. Absolutely cool. fantastic. I'm I'm going down. Really good. Yeah, the sound is so good. Yeah. Uh, so. Right, let's let's pop these back into the retract. So it does take quite a long time, doesn't it, to retract these? Which yeah, is yeah, uh, yeah, it's about eight, eight nine seconds, I think it is. Yeah. So they've obviously uh, clearly gone out there with a stopwatch and uh, made yeah, sure that it, yeah. yeah timed it and made sure they move in the in the right sort of time. Yeah. 
still getting bumped around. So uh, we're making about a thousand feet per minute at this uh, this power setting at 120 knots. So does that sort of match up with what we should have uh, for the performance yeah, of the airplane? I'd, I'd agree with that. I mean, it's the weight we've got, the sort of max takeoff weight, uh, I today a thousand feet a minute is uh, is pretty accurate to be honest. There's what you get on a on a 402, which is a very similar engine to this. Um, yes, yeah, as I said, that's probably about right. That's okay. Not. I suppose we should uh, probably uh, just do a, for the sake of um, just matching it up with the numbers we've got, do a VY climb for just a few minutes just to see uh, what we get out of yeah. that. So uh, what speed should I be pitching for for a VY in this aeroplane? So VY is the same as VR, VYSD, it's about right. 12 knots. Okay, uh, so I'll pop it back to uh, to that and we'll just get, uh, let's see what it levels out out of that. Well, there's VY 110, so we can fly between two knots. Okay. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't, but Mr. Autopilot can, so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, we're getting, I mean, we're still being bumped around by these thermals, but we're getting about sort of 1,400, 1,300, 1,400 feet per minute, so I think I, I'm going to, obviously, I'll, I'll put the the chart yeah, on the screen for you guys. Eight six is apparently going to ram, ram figures. Brilliant. Spot uh, on. Uh, really good. Fantastic. So it's flying bang on the numbers, so that's, that's what we want to yeah. see. Uh, should, we, uh, should we do a signal in the climb or while we're at it, just to give it a rough? Yeah, rough yeah. Idea. I mean, obviously we'll do a we'll do a proper single engine climb in the circuit uh, segment, but I can pull the throttle back on uh, on the right engine here. So this is the kind of thing we would do when we're with single engine training. I'll feed some rudder in that. As you can see, if the prop's not feathered, you get absolutely no climb at all. It's really uh, important to get a prop feathered. Yeah, so there we go. So let's let's push forward to um, what would be a zero thrust setting. So we'll, we'll go for the bottom of the green arc there, and we'll simulate a feathered prop using a zero thrust setting. And if we do that, we can see we're getting um, about sort of three, four hundred feet a minute, maybe about more like two, three hundred feet a minute. Does that tally with uh, with what you've yeah, got, Nathan? Yeah, two, two, five, seven. I've got on the ram figures here uh, for the weight we're at. Fantastic. Yeah, that, that is absolutely spot on then. So the single engine performance looks uh, looks bang on as well. Uh, obviously, we'll yeah. do another test on that with a with an actually failed engine later on in the uh, in the review flight. But for now, it looks like we're uh, we're in the ballpark. Right. It's pot yeah, we we'll, uh, we'll have a bunch of fuel off as well. It'll give us a uh, the overclimb um, performance for three four hundred pounds lighter. So oh yeah, we'll yeah, of course. Of course. We've we've increased yeah, we've got, uh, we've got figures for, for a slightly lighter weight, haven't we? So once we've burned yeah. some fuel off, we'll be able to check that. Coolio. Right, is there anything else I should... I sh oh, I'll tell you what I can be doing. I've been com I can be playing the cabin climate minigame. So yes. <laughs> as, as is with the 310. So in the 310, we've got a cabin comfort gauge. Here we've got a cabin climate gauge. And as you can see, our passengers are a little bit hot <laughs> at the moment. Um, so what I can do is I can open up some cabin air. And yep. turn it down here. Now, I don't think it's hot enough for, for me to need the air con. We do have air conditioning in this airplane, which is controlled by these switches over here. But I'll put it into circulate mode and leave the blower on uh, on high. So that, combined with the uh, the cabin air vents here, should just pump through some ambient air. And we can see already the cabin climate temperature is coming down nicely here. So uh, hopefully our passengers are going to be a little bit more comfortable. Sorry about that. I cooked you on the ground. <coughs> I'm assuming, obviously, that you wouldn't, you would never take off with the aircon turned on. I mean, that's that's normally the uh, the, the piston engine aeroplane thing, isn't it? Uh, generally, yeah, unless you've got like an electrical uh, mod that can do it with. So some of the newer um, piston aeroplanes, like the new Baron, can do it. But uh, generally, um, piston aircraft of this era, you can't take off with the air conditioning on. Yeah. Um, but normally, to be fair, once you once you're above, uh, well, seven thousand feet now, but once you're above three, four thousand, you get the ram air on. You don't need it. Um, yeah. Not in the UK anyway. They were never really hot enough. A few days ago, it was pretty warm. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. We'll not mention a, a couple of days ago in the UK when we we're all melting to death. Um, <laughs> but we can see, uh, we can see, we've just actually passed uh, passed into the negative figures on the outside air temperature gauge. So it's getting pretty cool outside. Uh, and we can see now we've got those vents open in the cabin. It's getting uh, a little bit more comfortable. We'll have to keep an eye on that as we climb higher. Because it will uh, go all the way into the uh, the uncomfortable zone on the the negative side, so then we'll have to pop on our uh, our heater. Um, right. Well, while, while we're climbing, we can think of something else to do. So we can actually show off the the de-icing and anti-icing system of this aeroplane, can't we? Um, yeah. So what we have available to us to combat icing conditions, so the aircraft is cleared for flight into known icing, uh, and we have a full pneumatic boot system. 
Uh, we also have pro electrical propeller anti-icing here. And we also have electrical anti-ice uh, anti-icing for the windscreen. I believe we've actually got a full heated panel on the uh, on the left-hand side of the uh, cockpit. I don't think the right one is That's heated, right, yeah. but it That's is great. just the left yeah. side. Yeah. So basically, yeah, like like what you have on an airliner. So you wouldn't want to get a stone chip on that because it's probably going to cost you about fifty grand to replace. Um, <laughs> but uh, since we're in flight sim, we're not too worried about that. So we can prop, pop on some of these and see what. Uh, kind of indications we get so if we put that on low we can see that the wind windshield anti-ice annunciator is coming up there and also yep. we've got uh, as the 310 has we've got uh, anti-icing boots which i absolutely love i love the fact that they've uh, gone to the trouble of mod uh, of uh, modeling these things so we can see surface de-ice is uh, on there and there we go we can see them blowing up we've got the, okay. the kind of ridges there and the great thing about the the 414 is that you don't have to micromanage these like you do in the 310. So in the 310, you pop them on, you break the ice off, you turn them off, and you allow the ice to build back up again. That's that's right, isn't it, Nathan? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, whereas in this, they're on a timer, so they blow up, they go, they stay up for a little bit, and then they retract. Then they wait a little bit more, and then they blow up again, um, which is fantastic. You can basically use them like an anti-icing system, like you would in the Dash 8. The Dash 8's uh, boots all well. The Dash 8's even more fancy because it's got separate sort of uh, zones for the for the boots. But um, in a sort of more slightly more simple sense, you can just leave the the surface de-icing on, and it will cycle through and make sure that no ice has a chance uh, to to build up on the surface of the airplane, which I find is uh, is very very cool for a uh, for a light aircraft. And it's I love to see this sort of thing modelled. Uh, in flight simulator, I, I really, really adds to the uh, to the realism for me, anyway. Well, really good as well. It looks. Uh, I'm saying not. It's for, for, this will be the first set when it actually does it automatically, uh, as in keep cycling. It would do that if it kept the switch held down, um, but not normally on that switch system. Um, unless you, you basically press it every time you want it. Oh right. Uh, whether that is, whether that's important for uh, anything or uh, I'm not I'm not sure. But the modelling yeah. of it, as in. Seconds it takes the takes the blow and what it looks like out the window is really really good. Really really good, yeah. So big fan of that. I think that's a, a fantastic addition to the aeroplane. Yeah. I'm still not sure winglets look better than the tip tanks though. I still think. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I gotta say, I prefer the look of the tip tanks to the winglets. The, the winglets might be better for uh, performance. Yeah. But the uh, yeah. but the tip tanks look cooler. How's the uh, cabin climb going? Oh, it's all. Oh, oh, we're, we're getting cold we're, now. We're, we're getting cold. We're getting cold. I'm going to turn the temperature up. And uh, as with the cabin climb as well for preservation, is that? Is oh, that yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so, so cabin, right. Cabin climb green, which is good. And uh, we're in the green. Cab cabin altitude of uh, 5,000 feet, which is quite comfortable at 11,000 feet. Yeah, uh, um, we've got, yeah, we've got a camera down to 5,000 feet, and differential pressure is in the middle of the green, and we're climbing at a steady 500 feet per minute, and obviously the aeroplane's still trugging up at, uh, at 1,000 feet per minute. Obviously, turbocharged aeroplane. Uh, we're just going to climb uh, without uh, without any kind of performance reduction, really, up until our critical altitude. So that's the, one of the fantastic features of, uh, of a turbocharged uh, aeroplane that we have uh, here. So, uh, yeah, that's model very nicely. Now one of the things that I find absolutely brilliant about this aeroplane is that in Microsoft Flight Simulator turbocharged aeroplanes don't behave as they should do. So when you get um, until you get to your critical altitude you shouldn't have to touch the mixture levers on a turbo aeroplane at all. They should just stay full forward for the best cooling. You shouldn't have to, to pull the manifold air pressure back at all. You shouldn't lose any performance until you hit the critical altitude which is the point at which the turbochargers can no longer maintain sea level boost pressure into the engines now in this in most microsoft flight simulator airplanes that's not the case you climb and you have to keep leaning out uh, and you lose performance the higher you go in this airplane they've used some custom lines of code and it works exactly as it should do in real life so we're not losing any performance here we're still doing a thousand feet per minute the the mixtures are still forward we've still got the same manifold air pressure as we had on the ground and we're passing almost thirteen thousand feet now so that to me is such a uh, such a good um, a good feature? Is it a feature? It's it's just correct implementation yeah, of how an aeroplane yeah. works. Yeah, it's just it's modeled correctly. Yeah. Um, but it's it's so good. I'm going to accelerate this back up to 120 now. But yeah, the uh, the aeroplane works just how it should it should in real life. And, and from a realism point of view, um, 
you know, for, for anyone who's a serious simmer or a real life pilot, you, you want to see that sort of thing. And that's what this airplane has. So really, really pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to climb up to 20,000 feet. I think we said 21, actually. It's 20,000 feet is our uh, oh, okay. what shot we've got for the airplane. Uh, so we'll stop climbing 20,000 and uh, see what sort of figures we get. Let's okay. Probably have to, to put a cut in here so you don't have to endure the entire uh, entirety of this climb. It's going to take a little while. and sounds really good, doesn't it? Oh, thousand yeah. to go. Perfect. We're almost there. Okay, so we see the uh, cabin rate of climb is pretty much leveled off now, the differential pressure's going up, and the cabin's uh, staying steady at about uh, seven, uh, seven and a half thousand feet. Very comfortable. It's very cool okay. to have a pressurized light aircraft in the yeah. simulator. It's really, uh, really something different. There's a price podcast now as well. No one can afford to, put, to fly the real thing. So uh, it's quite nice to have a, uh, at least a sim version. <laughs> yeah. That's captured nicely. Beautiful, lovely and smooth. Right, 20,000 feet. So let's go for our power setting. So we're going so, for a, uh, a medium sort of cruise, 75%, uh, what I'd probably use to be honest. So we're going for 34 inches of manifold pressure. Okay, 34 inches. Uh, we have 2300 uh, RPM. Nice and white cruise. Um, and then if we go to down to the fuel pump, we'll probably turn them from low to uh, off now. Now we're at top of line. Okay, fuel pump's off. And the, the fuel flow, uh, which I need to adjust, uh, now we're uh, top of uh, climb and in the cruise. Uh, 20,000 feet, ice today, which it is. Uh, total of 213 pounds an hour. Okay, right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go for um, PEGT and a little, yeah. bit, a little bit on the lean side of that and see where that gets us. Okay. So that's getting us... Uh, about 26, 27 gallons an hour. Okay. So, hang on. Oh, actually, 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 I'm being an idiot. Because we can do pounds an hour. Hey. Perfect. Yeah, so 213 pounds total. 213. Uh, okay. So yeah. we got uh, 280 at the moment. Yeah. That ADT is pretty high. And bring it down. I look like EGT cooling off a little. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm bringing it back a little bit more, leaning it off a bit more. Yeah. So that should be around that sort of fuel pl flow there. So we've gone quite yeah, far yeah. leaner peak there, but it looks like t the uh, the temperatures are okay, and we're oh, getting our yeah, up. Car well for the. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, video. yeah. So let's get those away, and let's see how uh, how fast we're going. I think we are getting uh, just over 200, 220 to, uh, well, that, hang on, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah, so 210 TAS at the moment. Uh, in fact, okay. you can just cheat with the ground speed there, so that's that. The, the book figures are 225 knots, uh, and I say, so that's, that's within five knots. I'd be really happy with that. I'll take and that. I'll be in real life. We generally do get slightly better than book figures. Uh, to be honest, we need a book figures based on a run down aeroplane and never the best performance, are we? Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I've definitely, I mean, we've, we've gone for quite a lean uh, setting there. So I think probably if I put it to peak EGT, we would probably be getting 220. I've definitely seen 220 out of this aeroplane in this uh, power setting configuration as well. So uh, I would 100% say that the cruise, the, uh, cruise performance of the aeroplane is bang on book figures. I tell you what, I'm just going to turn us back around to the north a little bit because we are going a long way away from Nottingham. This is the first time I've done an aeroplane review where I have to keep turning around because we've shot past the destination. <laughs> no. show, shows how much more performance this thing has than uh, the, the aeroplanes I usually review. Right. Do we try a 50-50% horsepower review or just a quick look at the figures of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's do it. Uh, 27 inches of my level pressure. Okay, so let's go back to 27 inches. Keep us nice and figure for our uh, version of descent, then it goes a bit slower. Yeah. Um, and then 2100 RPM, nice and quiet, on a nice Sorry. and quiet long range cruise. There we go. So this is probably what you'd set the aeroplane up as if you were if you were going to the south of France or something. Okay, That's and it, how many yeah. pounds per hour should we be aiming for here? 149 total. One really four nice nine. and uh, economical. Okay, so it's going to be 75, yeah, about, about where we've got it here. So. And that will give us a, uh, a TAS, which is really uh, reasonable to be honest, for that fuel flow, uh, 198 knots. Okay, and uh, we'll get, we've got 195 at the moment, so I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. I'm having way too much fun with this. This is such a good aeroplane. I like the shadowing on the cup as well. When I was yeah. uh, anyway, seeing the sun shine through the, the window. Really Hang nice. There's, a, there's an opening thing that we didn't show. There we go, look. It's a pair of glasses in there, yeah. and a business card, and some AA batteries. <laughs> find, uh, yeah, in real life you find AA batteries, sweet wrappers, um, all the good stuff in there. <laughs> there's a, uh, uh, there's white, a little charging point there for your GPS and everything. Yeah, and you've got your uh, oxygen port as well, will be on the left, I believe, there. Um, so that'll be a, uh, a probably emergency oxygen. I don't think these have a drop down mat. Uh, we'll have a little oxygen port in there. Right, right. Uh, on these, so basically your mask in if you have disease preservation. And we do, I do believe we do have emergency oxygen, uh, yeah we do, emergency oxygen there, so we've got the uh, the lever there to pull it, so if we did have a, a depressurisation we could pull that and get the masks out, and uh, well, it's not, the masks won't drop like on an airliner if I remember rightly, I think they're just ones that you have to plug in yourself, aren't they? They're like little That's cannons right, yeah, underneath the seat, yeah. Just like the old King Airs, yeah, uh, not like that now, fortunately, for passengers, uh, but yeah, back in these older airplanes, you wouldn't these dogs. Uh, just like you do, just like you do uh, in the unpressurised twin testers, I, I think uh, we'd have them in this altitude all the time yeah. uh, to keep us alive and uh, and well. Um, <laughs> always, always lose a Maltese Zanny mask as you uh, fly along. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay. So, shall we decide? Well, shall we have a crack at this emergency descent? Yeah. Shall we? Uh, shall we dump the cabin? See what happens with indications. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go down. for it. Then, right. uh, uh, let's turn it off and drop to the floor. Okay, so um, pull the which which one am I pulling here? Hang on. One to the one up top. Dump, uh, this one. Yeah, let's, let's pull them all. Oh, three. there we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so there you go. The cabin's climbing. The cabin has gone way up. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what Emergency oxygen. Oh, we got. So got the light up there. So it's, it's flow. I think it's flowing basically. Yeah. I mean, that's what it does. So, so people can. Uh, uh, do that. Cabin's okay. climbing. Well, right. Uh, Foot idle. idle. Props, props max. Props Auto max. Off. Autopilot off. Yeah. And just uh, pitch down to that um, that red, red red line. Here we go. Express elevator to the floor. And you can do this either clean config like we're doing now, or you can do uh, you put the flap and gear down at 170 knots and then go to flat speed. But at this altitude to get down. Especially to get down below uh, 10,000, you want to get down as fast as you can. And this will be the fastest way to do it. And I imagine uh, Kitty, you're doing quite a bit of pitch now, too. I uh, am, yeah. I'm having to up. trim forward and push really hard. <laughs> One thing as well, in, in the real Sassy Twins like they're doing this, the noise is incredible from them prop. Yeah. Um, it's just the noise of me. It's uh, really, really cool to do. Um, pretty frightening the first time we do it. Um, after that, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Not to the airplane a bit. Okay, I'm gonna put my target altitude. We're gonna go down to let's let's level things out at five thousand. 
That's good altitude for doing our general handling at. So we'll come down like this. And obviously this is a real procedure you have to do if you have a cabin depressurization. So, uh, yeah. Or fire or anything you want to get that yeah, quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, this is a this is a maneuver that we teach um, to respond to an engine fire on the um, on the commercial pilot's license course. Yeah. Obviously, one of the things you can uh, use the very very high air speed for uh, in this kind of maneuver does help to blow fires out. So if you do have an engine fire, uh, you can try to blow it out just using uh, using sheer airflow from the outside. Yeah. And it should, should work generally, unless it's a serious fire or the fuel's caught fire. Yeah, so obviously uh, you'd remove the source of fire, so you'd turn all the fuel off, uh, yeah. completely shut the engine down with all the fuel off and the, the fuel cock off and all that kind of thing. So you remove its its source, which is presumably the fuel, and then you yeah. increase the airflow as much as you can without ripping the wings off. And uh, hopefully that's going to blow uh, what's left of the fire out. Absolutely. And it all depends on what's on fire as well, because you can have accessory fires, you can have, let's say, uh, engine fires. It depends on, on what. But if you turn some of the source off and did the right thing, generally, as, as you know, it's not. it shouldn't be as uh, scary as it's down. Yeah. I'm going to line us up with the A46 there, and uh, that's going to give us a good bit of uh, situational awareness, I think. Back towards yeah. Notting. I can see the Trent as well, and the Water Sports Centre. Uh, get closer to the Langer 1 departure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they'll be watching. <laughs> I'd love it if they were. <laughs> well, a little, little bit of an inside joke there. Yeah. And uh, some of the East Business controllers might know a joke as well. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're coming up to 5,000, so I'm going to start to gently race it. You've got to be very, very careful with your control inputs at this kind of speed because it's very easy to rip off parts of the aeroplane if you're too aggressive. So I'm just going to reduce the rate of descent. The handling of the aeroplane during that was absolutely exemplary. You could see the, the little kind of wobbles yeah. you get at very very high uh, air speed and, and the appropriate amount of nose down pressure was required on the controls it just felt honestly really like uh, I mean obviously I've never done it in a 414 but I have done it in other aeroplanes and it felt absolutely spot on it looked visually uh, exactly the same as it should, should do yeah. it was really good uh, just watched it on the video here um, yeah, rough general handling setting I'd say about uh, 20, 28 inches of manifold pressure Okay. About 23, 24 RPM. Got a nice, should give us a nice speed, I imagine. Okay, just so let's go with that. The, uh, let's have a look at the VA. VA is running 51 knots. So okay. What, 148 at the minute, I think? Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got we've got just below 150 at the moment, so uh, we're looking uh, we're looking okay there. We've, we're back down into the bumps though, unfortunately. We're in the we're in the bump zone. Yeah, well, it's going to test your pilot skills to uh, be steeped in. Let me go out now. So it's, uh, I'm quite happy sat at home. All right, okay. You can sit. You yeah. can sit back and laugh at me. Right. Let's crack on with our first manoeuvre then. So we're going to go into uh, some steep turns. Would you Would you go fuel pumps on for this one, Nathan? Yeah. So you can go into the circuit speed and probably got fuel pump back onto low now. It's part of a descent check. Um, there's not a lot to do in these airplanes. Want to uh, probably put the uh, mixture back up a little bit as well, uh, yeah. which I think you have already. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Going to wind the the pressurisation back down to uh, to our landing altitude. Yeah. We have obviously pulled this now, so we're no longer a pressurised aeroplane. Uh, uh, there's nothing in the 138 feet, so 500 feet above that uh, gives you uh, yeah. about 600 feet roughly. So yep. set it about there nicely. Pop that about there. We'll pop the uh, the dump valve closed again. It will start to pressurise a little bit, but. Uh, We'll leave it there. It's all set up for the approach into Nottingham. So, uh, but without further ado, we'll have a little look out to this side, and uh, we'll roll into the turn. So we'll go all the way around 360 degrees. Now, what I'm expecting is the aeroplane is going to be pretty heavy, which it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that! We've actually got a feature on the autopilot which prevents me from overbanking. Which okay. is. Uh, okay. Which on, on that particular autopilot is probably right. It's not an aircraft thing. That wouldn't have been out when the the aircraft was developed, but on that new fancy autopilot that was in the sim. Yeah, it's actually it's uh, not right. It cut in there and actually tried to level the wings for me, which is <laughs> which is yeah. really cool. That's absolutely brilliant. 
I mean, it's a no, naughty. Got the but... a le level button on there. Um, I um, I, yes, it does. It does have the level button. Look, there we go. Look, yeah. there we go. It's doing it again. I'm going to cut the autopilot out again. That is absolutely awesome. I mean, it's completely yeah. destroying my nice, neat, steep turn, but that's so cool. Yeah. yeah it's definitely a nice feature for safety. See why uh, yeah. a lot of planes uh, are going to about now. There we go. Right, we're back out pretty much where we should have been. So that was going pretty neatly until that system decided to start cutting it, I would say. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah. That, that, I'm glad we did that because that's that's absolutely brilliant. I love that. That's so cool. Um, yeah. So not only does the airplane handle pretty much like I would expect it to, nice and heavy, quite a lot of, uh, of back pressure required to maintain altitude, but also we've got a, a very cool um, bank angle limiting assistance feature built into the autopilot to, to pop in there and help you out. So really, really cool to see something like that. Right, okay, so we see what it does when we when we try and stall it then. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Right, so uh, let's do a basic hassle check. So height, uh, height sufficient to be recovered by two and a half thousand feet. Airframe is clean. Safety and security, okay, hang on to your hats, everybody in the back. Engine, T's and P's, we're all in the green on the T's and P's. Mixture's full rich, fuel pumps are on low. Uh, location and lookout, we're clear of built-up areas, uh, active air fields, uh, controlled air space and danger zones, and... Uh, look out well there's no other airplanes apart from those wildly uh, rotating uh, Cessnas and Pipers on the ground at Doncaster so I think we should go straight into the maneuver so I'm going to reduce power all the way to idle I'm gonna shall I put the prop sync off for this uh, yeah I, I would yeah. Um, I prop sync prop off forward. Uh, props nice. full forward pitch to maintain so quite a lot of inertia because it's a big heavy airplane so we're not yeah. uh, slowing down that quickly to start off with but now we are as we start to get closer to the uh, to the back end of the drag curve, quite slow. And I imagine the, the features like the winglets and things like that help with the drag as well, so it's actually um, quite an efficient aeroplane. Quite a slip bit, I just like a lot of us just a uh, yeah. distant wind. Uh, yeah, they are uh, really fun to fly, really fast. Um, and yeah, shame it's not making it really. Yeah, yeah. Really nice looking aeroplanes as well, in my opinion. I think the, the 4 and 4 yeah. is a really beautiful plane. I'm, I am having, by the way, to feed a little bit of left pedal in, in case you were wondering. So that's 100% uh, accurate. Right, yeah. exactly what you'd yeah, expect. Yeah. Really beautiful representation of, uh, of what, uh, what I expect a big piston twin like this to, to fly like. There's the stall warner. So we're expecting some pretty benign uh, stall characteristics uh, here, aren't we, Nathan, I'd imagine? Uh, yeah. They should just, uh, just probably wallow and drop the nose. Um, you see you've got... Uh, hey. Okay, oh. that's, a, that's a bit more dramatic. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty dramatic. Okay, let's get out of this. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Right to your full fifth. Right to your full fifth. Full fifth. Yeah, yeah that's full, that's full out of spin runner. <laughs> A few dents on the nose, and uh, we're back fine again. Yeah, we're yeah. fine again. Yeah, we just had a, a light brush with the gram. Uh, we're going to give it another go because uh, because I, I've never seen it do that before. So, I mean, obviously, really interesting time for it to deci decide to do it when we're uh, do it, filming a video. But we're going to go in. Uh, I've done all the checks. I've got the airplane set back up again exactly how it was before. So I'm going to reduce the power to idle and just go into another stall and just see what it does. Uh, I'm going to be as, as benign and light as possible on the controls to avoid any kind of influence from me uh, so Cessna twins they do uh, they do sometimes drop a wing don't they Nathan but I, yeah. I would I wouldn't expect uh, anything quite and as dramatic as that you really, really yeah. abuse it yeah. yeah. but shouldn't spin from what you did there so uh, yeah, not, not, not the best simulation we've seen uh, on this really good sim so far uh, might be it's the uh, downside to come through for Okay, still slowing down. It does take quite a long while to. I'm trying to really make sure I don't put into an, into a uh, accelerated stall as well. So I'm really trying very hard to maintain yeah. level, which is quite difficult with all these stupid bumps going on. Also, that gear warning horn sound is very accurate as well. Yeah, it's very well modern. Really annoying as well. Really yeah, it is very. Like there we go. There's the stall warner. What's it gonna do? It? Oh, it's. Uh, that's it. It's. I think it's gone. 
It's just mushing. That's it. I've got f I've got full back pressure now, and it's it's just mushing. Yeah. So th this is this is pretty much what. Uh, well, normally do this. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the just mu it's just mushing away. Back. Yeah, the wing's slowly dropping, but this is de there. Yeah, there we go. Let's recover. So there we go. Full power. Level the wings out. Full prop. Full throttle. So that is what you'd usually expect from a Cessna Twin, not a uh, yeah. <laughs> an extremely violent spin, and completely unrecoverable spin. I don't think I've ever been a, in a completely unrecoverable spin in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. So that was a real first for me. Um, <laughs> very or in real life, you know? Yeah, no, no, not in real life either. Funnily enough, no, I've not had many impacts in the <laughs> into the ground in a, in a full nose down attitude spin. Funnily enough. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to say that the store characteristics of this aeroplane are pretty much spot on. We may have just had the aeroplane in, in some really funny kind of weight configuration or something where it just, it's just able to just tip into that sort of situation. But for the most part, and I have done stores in this aeroplane before, um, and that is pretty much what it does. It's just nice and benign. It drops a wing a little bit, and that's exactly what you expect out of a Cessna Twin in this sort of situation. So. Um, I'm not going to mark it down too much to that. We'll just say it's a, it's a little bit of a, a blip in the uh, in the otherwise exemplary performance thus far. Would you would you go along with that, Nathan? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So let's let's say stall test uh, is a mostly passed. Um, right. Yeah. So, uh, what I do like to do as well is just to check the sort of basic handling characteristics of the of the, uh, of the airplanes. So I'm going to put pop the yaw damper off now, and I'm just going to. Uh, slam a bit of rudder in well slam is, is maybe too violent I'm just gonna pop a bit of rudder pressure in and just watch what the uh, what the airplane does so with a bit of yaw we should be uh, getting the airplane setting up into a spiral descent which is what it's doing exactly so this is perfect yeah. sort of behavior it's exactly what you'd expect it to do I'm gonna roll back to wings level and just pop it into a bit of an angler bank and just leave it and we can see the airplane is again setting up into another spiral descent and uh, Angler bank is increasing a little bit. In fact, as the airspeed increases, it's going back to wings level. But that's an inherently stable aeroplane. It's probably what you'd expect this thing to do. Um, so that, to me, looks pretty good. Would you say the same, Nathan? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, everything looks really good. Uh, off me, well, we know the visuals in Minecraft, Minecraft Flight Simulator are really good anyway. But um, looking at that cockpit panel, looking outside the window, apart from the slightly degraded visuals based in real life outside the window, it looks uh, absolutely back on and the sound really good as well still fantastic right so let's say that uh, our steep turns and our stall test has been passed with uh, mostly flying colors so let's yep. uh, let's pop uh, pop the autopilot back on now have some slightly more competent uh, person at the controls mr. AI pop the yaw damper back on and we'll go heading and uh, altitude hold right there we go Right, so what we're going to do now is just demonstrate the uh, the functions of this aeroplane in terms of uh, nav features. So probably what you're most likely going to be doing with this aeroplane, if you uh, have it in your sim hangar, is slightly longer. Uh, oh, make sure it is in heading mode. Slightly longer navigational uh, flights using the. Is the oh, the autopilot's kicked itself back out again. There we go. I, I was just about to say the autopilot of this aeroplane is actually really good, but maybe that was just user error there. So mostly probably what you're going to be doing is slightly longer cross countries, maybe flying on Vatsim, that kind of thing. And this aeroplane is really fantastic at that. So what I'm going to try to do is, is show you what you can do with the uh, the nice uh, GTN 750 kit here. So, well, I'm, in fact, no, I'm not. I'm just going to pop a, a direct to him. So Echo Golf Bravo November for Nottingham. Yep. There we go. Let's pop that direct to him. And we're going to go into nav mode now uh, and make sure we got uh, GPS selected. So, in fact, I'm going to have to reselect that because uh, I didn't have the, the right nav source. That is correct. That's exactly how it should work. If you, don't have an, if you change nav source, then the autopilot will, uh, will just kick itself into a basic mode like heading uh, or roll hold. So it's uh, spot on done that. As we can see, we've got the nice line on that. So, other features that we can do on the uh, on the 750, which link up with the the fuel computer that we've got in the uh, in the Form 4. So we have a fuel planning mode here, which drives from the fuel computer. So if we hit present position and use sensor data, uh, in fact, make sure we are, we are actually going to have to put uh, Nottingham in because we didn't put a flight plan in ahead of time. So we'll do that now. There we go. So now we have an indication of 
fuel requirement to get to Nottingham. It's going to take us another 5.6 gallons. Well, we have almost 100 gallons on board, so obviously we're going to have a reserve at Nottingham of about an hour and 40 minutes worth of fuel. And that's really handy, certainly to me anyway, because I always tend to think of my fuel as time rather than volume. So we know yep. we've got almost two hours, well, an hour and three quarters worth of, uh, of hold time over Nottingham if we need to hold for whatever reason or if we need to divert. So I think that's really, really useful. Uh, the other thing that you can do with the uh, with the GTN, and this isn't limited to the 4 and 4, this is just a GTN 750 feature, but it's something that you'll probably find very handy when flying the 4 and 4, is planned descents. So let's say we want to be at 1,000 feet for circuit height, not 10,000, 1,000 feet. Uh, oh, oh, okay, so th we are able to do this because you do need a flight plan for this, which is annoying because I just did a direct two, it's not going to work. But you can uh, you can plan the, uh, the rate of descent, you can... In fact, let's let's try and do it. Let's just try and put a flight plan in. So E G C N to E G B N. There we go. And now, when we go into uh, V nav, there we go. We can put E G B N in, and we can have an alpha set of let's say uh, let's say three miles because we want to be down before we get into the A T Z. Uh, target altitude there, and is it going to work? Oh, maybe it isn't. That's that's more like my fault for not putting it in. It does all work very very nicely usually. So unfortunately, I can't uh, I can't show that off uh, at the moment. Other stuff that you've got on here, you've got traffic displays, are very handy if you're flying on Vatsim. You can see other people's aeroplanes displayed on here, which is pretty cool. Uh, and obviously, you've also got uh, terrain indication on here, and you have a weather radar too. So pop that up. Uh, as you can see, we've not got a cloud in the sky, so you can't see anything on the weather radar right now, but you've got a vertical scan mode and a horizontal scan mode. That does work very, very nicely. So that's all very handy when you do... Oh, go on. Yeah, okay, so well. Um, obviously, I'm very comfortable with the Garmin 650 and 750 uh, model. And if you want to put in the comment section below, I'm happy to do a tutorial video if anyone wants that. Uh, I'll get some demand for it on the 750. It features features after that flight plans in the real world. People want that. I can work that work that with uh, Kitty and uh, try and get that at some point if anyone wants that. Yeah, that would be really cool actually, because I'm I've never flown with a, a 750 in real life. I our aeroplanes just have uh, 430s or G1000s in them. So uh, yeah, that would be really cool to see. Right. Okay. Should we get ready for our uh, descent into Nottingham, Nathan? Have you got a checklist for me? Yeah. I have. One second. Lost it a second in the performance uh, graph. No worries. Okay, uh, okay so uh, descent uh, checklist. Now, approach brief been um, complete. We're going to Nottingham. Where normally go? Uh, fuel stacks done by Ames, they are. Yep, they are. Pressure is set to uh, about 600 feet, just 500 feet across um, the elevation, Nottingham, about 138. Yep, we got that set. Uh, set 1013 days, so it's nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, we go uh, towards the bottom degrees now, uh, okay. over the turn. Let's reduce power, bottom of the greens. And uh, anti ice uh, as required, make sure to leave with the ice to be able to leave and work off now. Yeah, full force. Uh, Steve Bells from Times just we're still happy in our gaming chairs at home. Yeah, home. absolutely, we're nice and comfy. Seat backs, the uh, table will throw in the back. And, yeah, you got uh, your tables away? Yeah, tables are away, I'll just check. Yeah, they're behaving themselves back now. So blow 170 knots, aren't we? So we can put the external landing lights out now if you want to. Yeah, let's pop the landing lights out. Give the visibility into the circuit. And cow flaps, um, probably won't close them yet to be honest. If you want to keep some, some heat in the engine, you just pull that power away. Okay. Uh, so we'll probably close that as we get uh, close to, to our uh, uh, level altitude. Okay. And, uh, and that's it. Okay, awesome. Uh, so we're about eight miles to go, so I'm going to set up a bit of a steady descent. Obviously, we're a pressurised aeroplane, so we don't need to worry too much about bursting the eardrums of our uh, of our passengers, because uh, obviously the cabin rate of descent will be uh, somewhat different to the. Um, oh, hang on! In fact, I'm doing an absolutely rubbish job here, so I've got to set my altitude window first. I've got to bug up first, and then set it into VS mode. Doing an absolutely <laughs> horrible job of being a good pilot here, but uh, hey, you should be used to that by now. Uh, there we go, and we can set up our uh, descent now may have to come down a little bit faster because I've been wasting time. There we go, we're at a thousand feet per minute, sir. We can actually see Nottingham ahead of us there. Yep. Very very familiar sight for me and Nathan. 
Absolutely. Right, so what we're planning to do now is join the visual circuit. We're going to use runway 27, which is the slightly longer runway at uh, Nottingham. The short field performance of the Form 4 is pretty good, uh, but I do, uh, I do need a little bit more uh, runway for what we're going to be doing. Um, and we're going to be flying a standard circuit with full flap for a touch and go. And then we're going to be flying a flapless circuit to a touch and go. Then we're going to be experiencing a, a real life engine failure. So I'm going to pull the mixture back all the way on the critical engine, which is the left engine. Uh, we'll see what, what kind of climb performance we get. We reset the, the weight, by the way, when we reset the flight. We put it back to the lighter weight setting on the performance tables that we have. So we should be able to check that as we, uh, as we do this single engine uh, climb. Feather the prop. We'll do all the feathering procedures and all the rest of it. Uh, and then we'll come around for a single engine landing. Hey. Um, hang on, 174 is our flap limiting, isn't it? I might put a stage of flaps out now just to slow us down a yep. bit. Could have done with that vertical uh, nav planning mode because it looks like we're a bit high. Never mind. I'll tell you what we can do. Let's just stick an orbit in. You can see the National Water Sports Centre here. Center yeah. Nottingham over there. Beautiful. Greatest football team in the world. After yeah. the first. <laughs> okay. I'm not a football fan, so I'll let you get away with that one. Yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> okay, so what sort of what sort of speed should we be aiming for? I mean the the Form 4 is pretty happy at, at uh, about 120 knots, isn't it? Should we go for about 120 knots? Yeah, uh, so, so, yeah, so we'll normally go uh, 130 clean, and okay. then uh, obviously 120 with the uh, flapping gear, just on the, uh, the okay. circuit slowing down to uh, I'll say 105 again on the threshold. So yeah, it's quite a nice cover at the moment. If we leave it roughly where it is, seems quite happy. Okay. Um, where you are. Okay, so we've got 800 foot circuits at Nottingham, so I'm going to try and fly at about sort of 950, because uh, it's about 150, 130 odd foot elevation, if I remember rightly go for 150 because I'm not great at uh, flying to within that sort of margin it's such a nice aeroplane to hand, hand fly honestly yeah I'm looking forward to having a go at this yeah uh, you, you, you need to get one of these mate you really do because it's so much fun those bloody bumps though it's <laughs> yeah that's a bit more accurate down this, at this level. At this level, uh, yeah. At this level, you would be yeah. expecting quite a few bumps, yeah. yeah. Uh, should, we, should we fly over the top of Tolton Hall? Is it modelled? Where is it? Uh, oh, the, the, lake, the little lake. Oh, there we go. That's it. Lake. Yeah, that's go, yeah. it. Let's get right Let's over the top of them. Stick the yeah. finger up as we go past. Again, not Nottingham law here. We may be leaving people behind a little bit, but... Yes, uh, <laughs> we're not a huge fan of the, uh, the gentleman who lives there. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> no, just uh, had to move into move into the hall. I'm mean, gonna stop playing in the back of the airfield, which has been there since the 1930s. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. People in right. life. Brakes, undercarriage, mixtures full rich, mags are all set on. Yeah. Fuel on sufficient. Fuel pumps are on low. Uh, flaps. We'll we've got flaps one out already. Uh, instruments all down, in flap, the green. Flaps fuel in turn base basically. Right. Okay. Uh, gear down, so that's good. And the turn base goes to the second stage of flap, keeping it about 120 knots. Okay, second uh, stage of flaps, keep it at 120. Now we're going to have to fly a, a very tight circuit here at Nottingham because uh, we're constrained by noise requirements. The little villagers here, we aren't allowed to fly over them. Uh, I am trying to keep the trying to keep the RPM down, which helps with uh, noise abatement as well. The aeroplane's a lot quieter at lower RPM. I usually put the CDI on run runway heading for situational awareness. I forgot to do that because I'm useless, but we'll uh, we'll just do it with visual references. Plus, I can see it on the GPS. Sure, feel like this as well. Probably as it as a turn final, full flap, and then the uh, prop props first slowly forward. Yep. Just get it too Start much. bringing the speed back a bit because again, it's quite a slippy aeroplane. Nice efficient aerodynamics, so don't want to struggle too much bringing the speed back. Okay, let's go wings level. Go. Uh, full flap now, props full forwards, coming back towards about 105. There's our decision altitude going off on the radar altimeter, aiming for the numbers. Come back to idle on the power. Just hold that nose up there. 
Ooh, floating a bit. Down we go. Full power coming in. Flap short. Oh, flaps up. There we go. I should do. Bit more pedal. And uh, when you're ready, uh, flaps. Uh, sorry, we actually forgot. Cow flaps are open as well. When you're ready. Oh yeah, cow flaps. In. Yeah, absolutely. So let's pop those open now. Need that extra bit of cooling. Let's go top of the greens. Twenty-five. There's so much, uh, I'm needing to put uh, so much right pedal in that I'm actually putting right pedal in in the left hand turn. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to try and do my CDI now. So there we go. That should help with my situational awareness a little bit. Yep. Even though I'm under pressure and I've got an actual uh, Cessna twin pilot look breathing down at me and uh, probably judging how bad I am, I'm still really enjoying this because this is such a joy to, to hand fly this aeroplane. It's just really good fun to watch as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, just miss these aeroplanes a lot. And the uh, colonel wants me to, uh, to fly one for them in Nottingham area, let me know. I'll be happy to do yeah, that same, again. same. Hit, hit me up if anyone's got a 414 anywhere in the UK. I don't care where it is. In, in Scotland, Northern Ireland, wherever, hit me up. I want to fly one. <laughs> right, okay, brakes, pressurised, uh, undercarriage. In fact, I didn't put the, oh, I didn't put the gear down, gear up. That was uh, very stupid of me. Gear's still down. <laughs> Peace max fuels on both. Uh, flaps we're going to defer because we're not going to use any flaps. Um, hatches and harnesses are secure and the lights are all on. We'll put the taxi light on as well for a little bit of extra conspicuity. Right, so this so is going to be a flapper's uh, approach. Yeah, probably about 115 to 120 knots for okay. the ref. It's slightly, it's a lot of 310, it's slightly uh, nose high anyway, so you don't need to flare. Uh, power basically goes to off as just before you touch down. Um, that should give you a high nose attitude anyway, uh, okay. almost in the flare. Keep that speed. Okay, so I'm going to uh, be quite aggressive with the throttle settings here because uh, slippy aeroplane. Yep. Quite a lot of weight behind it. I'm going to have uh, trouble slowing it down without the help of the flaps. You do have the gear, obviously, that's quite draggy in itself, but. Uh, just make sure your props forward as well. Yeah, um, yeah, let's throw those yeah. forward too now. Just a bit of drag here. Give him an extra bit of drag. Would you keep the yaw damper on as you're doing this or pop it off? Uh, pop it off. Pop it off, okay, let's get the yaw damper off now. A little bit fast here, so we may be uh, struggling a touch. Maybe do a little bit of side slip to try and help uh, help with that. Wee. Oh, we are way too oh. fast now. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, you're probably landing about midway down, I imagine. Take the power all the way off now. Yeah, power's off. It shouldn't float too much, but it should come down quite nicely. It is doing not. Oh, it's coming down. There we go, that'll do. That's a real touch and go, full power. Yeah. <laughs> Flaps are up. And positive climb gear. Right. So now. Let's do this engine failure. So, yep. Here we go. Right, simulating left engine failure now. Okay, we. So I just immediately kicked full uh, opposite rudder in there, and uh, maybe a little bit too much. There we go. Now let's get the uh, gear up. Gear is up. Power up. Full power set. Flap up. Flap is all the way up. Go up. So let's pitch to maintain one uh, one ten or one twelve. There we go. There's blue line speed. Let's see what kind of performance. Well, actually, we've got a feather, haven't we? So, uh, yeah, left leg dead, oh, left oh, engine oh. dead, prop all yeah. the way back, and now I've got to get my mouse and pull it into the feathering descent. There we go. We're now feathering, and we'll see that running down and stopping any seconds. Let's yeah, see, we're already getting it. There we go. It's running down now. We are actually we're already getting the, the performance advantage because we are actually starting to climb. So we're seeing about three four hundred feet per minute at the moment. Nathan, is that tallying up with your numbers? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me look at that again. Uh, so we change the weight to a lighter weight before we reset. It is. Uh, signal can climb, I uh, about three hundred sixteen feet a minute. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty right. much exactly what we're getting. So spot on, fantastic stuff. Again, from the uh, from the four and four. Right, let me get some uh, some rudder trim in. I'm going to do that with my uh, honeycomb yoke uh, trim switch. How about if we uh, secure the engine like we normally would as well? Yeah. Okay. So. Let's... Oh. 
wrong engine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, so yeah, okay, so let's secure the engine. So it'll be alternator off on the affected side. So left engine's dead, left alternator off. Which we uh, have. Fuel pump off on the affected side. Yeah, so fuel pump off affected side. We Mags off left side. Mags off left side. Uh, cow flap closed on the uh, left side. side. Yeah, cow flap closed. And then the fuel off on the uh, left side as well. Oh god, this is going to be awkward because I'm going to have to utch myself over into the <laughs> middle. Uh, a bit more than that. There we go. Perfect. Oh, just about. Right, okay. Well done. Let's make it start making our way back to Nottingham. I've got the feeling that that's harder than, than it is in real life just because I've got to move myself around the cockpit for it. Not really, because you have to look down to make sure we're getting the right lever. No, so, uh, fair enough. It's, yeah. it's not too far up. But for the most part, the single engine performance of the the four one four is uh, is very good. It's uh, yeah, definitely quite a safe aeroplane to handle on on one engine. Obviously, the, when the critical engine goes, which is the left engine, you get a lot of yaw. Yeah. Um, but as long as you you stay on top of that and you feed enough uh, opposite rudder in to keep on top of that, then. Yeah, very, very safe aeroplane. You can see it climbs quite nicely. So we're up to our, our circuit height. Now, you might have noticed as well that I just climbed in a straight line and just went straight forward. Uh, that's usually the, the safe... Well, it's always the safest thing to do if you have an engine failure in a multi-engine aeroplane. You should always climb straight ahead to a safe altitude. Now, if I was on, in, on instruments, I would usually be going to the sector safety altitude for whatever the uh, instrument procedure I was on. Since we're visual, we'll say that uh, circuit height is our uh, is our safe altitude. Yeah. I'm still putting some uh, rudder trim in. I'm determined to get that ball in the middle. I don't want to put too much in, though, because it's going to make landing harder. Yeah, as soon as we lose the power, it's going to go back this way. <laughs> yeah. I'll just try and balance it out with the rudder pressure. I've got a bit of a curve. I, I think I need some new rudder pedals, actually, because these, these are a little bit on the, the kind of cheap and, and light side. If I had some heavier rudder pedals, it would be a lot uh, more realistic. But. Yeah. And we can see, uh, actually, how the aeroplane's kind of crabbing along uh, on one engine here, which is exactly what multi-engine aeroplanes do when they're flying asymmetric. They kind of uh, just uh, come a, go a little bit sideways through the, uh, through the air. Which is exactly what you see. Uh, oh yeah, let's let's do that. There we go. Look at that. There's the stopped and feathered engine. We can see it's uh, the blades are turned into wind there. You can see all the the right rudder pressure that I'm having to put in here with, with the help of the trim tab. Good to see. Very cool. Cool to see the shutdown. Well, the shutdown engine is slightly blocked by the uh, by the little pillar there. Right. Okay. We're on down. We're here. So normally, what I would do, Nathan, is defer any kind of gear and flap until we're we're sort of descending. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So gear da gear down only go down. Uh, and obviously, single engine, as you know, uh, being a multi engine instructor, um, which is very uh, easy to, to lose speed and very hard to get it back. So yeah. Um, make sure you keep on top of the speed and don't get too slow because you, so you won't, get it, won't get it back. Okay, I'm going to start pulling the uh, the power back a touch now because I think we've got enough uh, enough air speed here. Yeah, so top of the green works quite nicely on a, on a downwind. Uh, yep. Um, oh, we had before on a single engine. We are a little bit, a uh, little bit on the uh, high side of uh, temperatures on the right edge, so I want to make sure we don't go uh, go too far past that. Right, so I'm yeah. going to start descending, so I'm going to select gear down now. Fly a little bit of a wider circuit than we were before. I thought, I'm sure the residents of Cockgrave will uh, forgive us for overflying a little bit, given that we've uh, got an in-flight emergency here. Absolutely, we get, probably get uh, flaps uh, two down now, and then obviously okay. you never, uh, never commit to uh, full flap unless you're absolutely sure you're going to make, make the runway. Yeah. I'm going to have to start adjusting the power now. I'm sure I'm going to make the runway, so I'm going to go full flap now. Start getting the speed back a bit. Now the key is to not adjust throttle too much because um, every time you adjust throttle, there's a corresponding change in the yaw of the aeroplane. So you want to try and keep your throttle as constant as possible during uh, final approach. And just at the last second, as you flare, start to come back all the way back to idle on the power and land it pretty much as you would with uh, with both engines operating. Yep. Just like that. I'll take that. Nicely done. Thank you very much, sir. Right, there we go. Do you reckon it'll taxi on one engine? Uh, if you keep it moving, it should. 
Um, as long as you keep uh, as long as you don't stop it, I'd probably go round the. the uh, I say you've got the left-handed fail, so you might have to turn. But as soon as you stop, it will. Uh, you, you shouldn't be able to taxi it. Right. Okay. So let's let's not test that theory out too much. Let's let's do a backtrack because I think that Perry track is going to be too narrow for us. And let's come off on the uh, on the intersection of the old runway. Yeah. Nottingham being visited by a Spitfire. It's not something you see every day. Nice. No. Uh, we got a bunch of vans lined up on the flight line. I'm not sure uh, Richard would be too happy with that. No. Maybe if we just pull in here, we'll uh, they'll, they'll get lost. Let's see. Maybe not. Oh well. Never mind. We'll ignore them. I'm going to pull way too far forward and annoy Brian, but never mind. There we go. Yep. Right. Parky brake set. Right. Should we uh, should we do a, a shutdown with a with a with a shutdown engine? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, I know the the basic stuff. So let's get the the lights sorted. Let's get the transponder back onto standby. Peter heater can come off. The stall yeah, heater can up. come off as well. Flaps can come all the way up. So that's definitely not ground idle. That's a bit overzealous for that. That's a bit more like it. Right, I mean, do you want uh, to hit, hit the checklist? Yeah, so uh, the fuel pump uh, on, on the uh, live side will have to go to off, otherwise it will never uh, properly shut down. Actually, let's uh, test that theory. So if you All leave right. it in low, right. when we take the mixture out, it shouldn't shut down um, generally. If there's only enough fuel on that low fuel pump, right, keep it okay. running. Which is really embarrassing when you do it on the ramp. <laughs> um, so yeah, see if, see if it models that well Let's or not. Let's see if it does that right. Okay. Um, other than that, obviously flaps are cow flaps are open. We'll leave the ones on the other affected side. Uh, trim tabs set back to zero. There we go. I'll uh, recenter the uh, red trim, which is obviously all the way over on the the stops, pretty much on the right hand side. There we go. Yep. And then the throttle to idle. Okay, idle. Yep. And uh, mix us to uh, idle cut off, see what happens, see if it shuts down or not. Yeah, see if it does shut down. Yeah, it has. Oh, uh, and it has. Never mind. Okay, so they, <laughs> they haven't they haven't quite added that particular little quirk, but uh, for no. the most part, I think they uh, I think we can we can give them that, can't we? There yeah, we go, right. mags off. Mags off. And uh, then battery and all the electrics off. Battery and all the electrics. There we go. You know what, Nathan? I'm going to leave you uh, with your thoughts first of all. So. Uh, if you want to give your conclusion as to what you think of this aeroplane, and then uh, I'll give mine. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's a great modelled uh, aeroplane. Um, can I hear a, a ticking of the hot engines there, uh, in the background? There we go. Yeah, that's the ticking of the hot engines for you. There we go. So that's, that's nice and modelled. I like the fact it's stopped propping feathers on the left side as you've had it feathered. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, externally, uh, I think it's uh, got to be a 9 out of 10. Uh, ex ex externally, uh, internally, um, I think with the avionics fit and the little scratches, and that's so it's, yeah, I'm gonna have to give it a 10 to be honest. It's really good. Um, the way the, the tables fold out, the little screws around the windows, um, the seats, the curtains, the lights above their head, the vents, um, they, they, they all work by the way, they, they all they so turn on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to give it nine and a half. It's not absolutely perfect, obviously, because of the graphics. But even the, even the um, the the coat hangers in the back, yeah. and the rail, uh, it's really good. Does the toilet work? Has it got oh, toilet oh good question. Good question. It might. It, it, I think it might have one fitted. Let's hang on. Just touch ourselves down here. I know there's a key command uh, for, uh, for moving. There you go. So she's sitting on. She's sitting on it. Oh yeah, she's so sitting she, on it. Yeah, there we go. That's the, en the engineer's seat, as they call it. <laughs> that obviously lifts up the uh, as, a, as a toilet in there. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All the placards. It's really good. And then the sounds. Um, I, I'm going to give it a another um, ten out of ten for sounds. To be honest, um, it's really small things wrong with the airplane. Um, just you know, just like I would say, shutting down then. But the nothing. Uh, I, I genuinely think compared to the 310, which I absolutely loved, and you sure you'll, when you can hear my voice on the last video, you'll hear about how much I liked it. Um, 
because I was a bit quiet on that one. Hopefully it's a bit better this time. But this one I think is better than the Movers 310 uh, from what I've seen. I'd like to fly in both, not got a uh, chance to fly in both yet. I've been doing a lot of moving house and stuff recently. Uh, and a lot of uh, things at work with the uh, new King Air Dark Rate, etc. But I definitely want to get around uh, to flying in both and I'll let you know my opinion when I can. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't wait to buy it, have a go at it and uh, give it a fly around really. Brilliant. My, uh... I don't think you'd get a better endorsement than that, could you? But thank you very much, Nathan, and, and thanks for coming oh. along again uh, for another one of these videos. I'm sure all the guys watching on the on the channel are, appreciate your efforts. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you very much. And now, friends, we come finally to the end. Yes, it's uh, the good old pros and cons. It's my conclusion of this particular beautiful aeroplane in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now you've probably already surmised that I'm, I'm not really going to uh, to tell it off too much, but there are a few points that I are, that uh, I have here to raise. But we'll start off with the good bits, as there are quite a few. So the pros. First of all, I've just got the overall graphical fidelity of the aeroplane. As you can see here, it's uh, just sitting on the ramp, uh, nicely shining in the sunshine at, uh, at Nottingham. The exterior model of the aeroplane is as good as anything I've seen in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, if not better. There, there is very, very little to get close to this, in my opinion. Now, obviously, there's stuff that I don't have that is out there which has been praised for its uh, its gra graphical fidelity, things like the Phoenix um, A320 and the, the PMTG73 and stuff like that, although Jimbo did, uh, did do a review of that one. But for me, personally, this is um, one of the equal best-looking planes in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It is brilliant. And the inside is just as good. Brilliant panel, brilliant furnishings, fantastic cabin. It's really, really fantastic uh, looking uh, aeroplane. So I think overall graphically, it's it's spot on. It's as good as you could possibly imagine um, you can get in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that's really saying something because it's, it's an unbelievably good looking sim. Uh, the next thing I've, item I've got on the pros list is uh, or are the sounds the sound package now when this first launched the sounds were a little bit uh, not great but overall the different iterations of uh, of the beta versions as they got uh, better and better incrementally better and better sound packages were were developed and added to this airplane and and now the sounds are as good as, as again as good as anything in microsoft flight simulator in my opinion i think the spot on it sounds just like the real aeroplane the only thing it's missing is just the feeling of a vibration that you get uh, in, a, in a big piston aeroplane that you you kind of get through the controls and through the the airframe that's the only thing it's missing to to be to be full uh, full immersion um and it's not just the engine sounds either all the different uh, systems of the aircraft have their own sound effects the air conditioning the fuel pumps all of the switches alarms and and uh, alerts in the cockpit all have their own uh, custom sounds, opening and closing doors, uh, even things like opening and closing, um, get rid of get rid of this, even things like opening and closing windows, although you can't hear, really hear it as, as well as you could hear a little squeaky sound there. I've got still the headphone simulation turned on, so it's still a little bit quiet, but yeah, everything has its own, uh, every animation really has its own sound to it, which is really, really impressive. Speaking of animations, that's the next item on the list. So overall, uh, the aircraft has a huge number of animations. I showed you on the ramp at Doncaster all the different doors, ba various ma maintenance uh, hatches and things that you can open up on this airplane. It's not on its own in being able to do that. There are other aircraft where you can open pretty much everything. Uh, the 310 comes to mind. But um, it is really impressive to see that they've gone to the effort of, of modeling all of that different stuff. Um, and also the baggage that turns up in the baggage compartments as you add it uh, on the EFB, the passengers that turn up in the cabin, um, the the little lights inside the baggage compartments that all work as they should do. Uh, it, it's all just absolutely stunning. Also, one of my favorite features on this aeroplane, uh, which it shares with the 310, it's got animated uh, de-icing boots, which I'm told the default uh, TBM 930 has. I've, I mean, that comes as something of a shock to me, um, but that shows just how much I fly the default aeroplanes that I don't even realize uh, what they have on them. But yes, yeah, certainly for an aircraft of this level of systems depth, you really need to see things like that working and you can on this aeroplane and what more could I ask for really? Um, so yeah, the animations as a whole are, are absolutely fantastic. Things like the cowl flaps uh, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, 
Next item that I've got on the list are the systems on the aeroplane. Now, the, the Form 4 is quite a complex aeroplane. It's not exactly the PMDG DC-6, but it certainly is uh, quite a complex aircraft to, to, uh, to master, really, to get your head around. Um, but in order to get that full kind of 414 experience, all of the systems have to work properly. And in this aeroplane, they do. The, uh, the pressurization is all present and correct. It works exactly like it should do. The air conditioning is present, the heaters are all present, and obviously there is a, 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 a little, I like to call it a mini game, a little thing you can uh, you can play around with, um, with the cabin temperature, keeping your passengers at the right temperature and things like that. It keeps you uh, actively thinking about uh, m messing around with the heater controls and, and showing that all the, you know, they all actually work and aren't just a switch accompanied with a sound. They do have an effect on the, on the aircraft uh, simulation. Uh, the electrical systems of the aeroplane are, for the most part, there. We will get onto a slight bugbear later. Uh, the fuel computer is is absolutely brilliant, and you can literally use the real world manual for this thing to to play with it in the sim. That's how uh, well this has been mod uh, modelled. Autopilot system is brilliant, although that kind of is is the thanks to the um, the PMS uh, add-on here. It does kind of bring its own autopilot with it. The default autopilot is brilliant as well, though. To be fair. Um, the engines are modelled brilliantly. It's so, so good to finally have a turbocharged aeroplane where you can climb throttles full forward, not have to worry about the mixture or anything like that. You can just go all the way up to the critical altitude, exactly like you're supposed to be able to do in real life. It's it's so um, refreshing and, and it maintains the immersion of, of flying the real aeroplane, really, which um, I think is, is spot on, to be honest. Other systems to talk about, we've got things like the uh, the extending landing lights, which look absolutely brilliant when they're turned on. The radar altimeter, um, all of the, the navigational instrumentation in the aircraft, all the instrumentation in general is all present and correct, and it all works properly. I mean, what more can I say? It, it's it's a, quite a complicated airplane in real life, and it's a similarly complicated airplane in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's exactly uh, what you want out of a proper in-depth let's say it's study level simulation of the aeroplane so it's about as good as it gets on that front the next item that i've got is a big one we always like to make sure the flight model is right and in my opinion i'm going to go out on the limb here but this is the best handling light aircraft in microsoft flight simulator in my opinion i think it flies beautifully you can really it's just got that inertia when you you try to when you start maneuver with the aircraft you turn your controls it just there's just a little bit of a second before it responds and it, it's just you, you feel the weight of the aeroplane in everything you do everything from taxiing to steep turns to stalls everything feels like a Cessna 414 should obviously with the disclaimer that I've never flown one in real life but um, according to uh, according to Nathan who who has flown very similar types in real life he thinks that's that's spot on how it should be handling as well. So as far as I'm concerned, the flight model is brilliant and it's a joy to hand fly. The autopilot is fantastic too. Um, don't get me wrong, it, it handles brilliantly with the autopilot and certainly with a, a complex aeroplane, you need a good autopilot to handle the flying while you mess around with the other systems. Um, but for when you aren't using the autopilot, it's just so, so much fun to hand fly. Uh, and get your hands on it and, and just uh, maneuver it around basically. So as far as I'm concerned, that is probably the biggest pro that this that this airplane could have. It's just so, so much fun to fly. The next item that I've got uh, kind of links in with the flight model. It's the overall performance of the airplane. So we've done our best to dig up um, accurate performance data for this aircraft. And as far as we can tell, it hits every single number spot on. It is really really nicely uh, modeled and very very true to the performance of the real aircraft so as far as i can tell it's it's a study level level airplane in terms of its uh, its performance characteristics and its handling and i've really really enjoyed my time playing around with it and testing it uh, over the past few weeks and throughout the various sort of versions of the beta test um, that i've been kind of following for the last uh, couple of months or so so i did say there were a couple of cons and there are we'll, we'll get on to those uh, you can never go too long without uh, having a good old moan if you're a uh, professional pilot, that's for sure. So, first of all, now you'd expect on an aeroplane that's been modelled to this level of detail and with this much love and care and attention, that they would probably have modelled the electrical system of the aircraft. And you'd be able to pop the circuit breakers and they'd work as they do in the real aeroplane. But sadly, they don't. 
These are just for show. They don't pop. They don't uh, affect the electrical system of the airplane at all. Um, and I've got to say, they're kind of lagging behind on the, in that respect. Granted, the electrical system in this airplane is probably a lot more complicated than something like a Piper Arrow. Um, but thinking back to the Just Flight airplanes, which came out a long time ago now, they all have working circuit breaker panels that all uh, work as they should, and the circuit breakers will pop as the systems fail and all the rest of it. So um, that certainly, on an airplane that goes for this price, uh, with this level of depth in every other area, just feels like like a little bit of a cut corner, I must say. Now, there might be a legit reason why this hasn't been done, or it may be that it's coming in a future update. But for now, that certainly earns a little bit of a demerit. Uh, the next item that I've got now, with an aeroplane that costs this much money, and I am going to be keep referencing back to the price now, you would expect there to be a, a few more maintenance-specific features. Now, what I mean by that is, for example, the Just Flight Arrows, if you abuse the engines, um, the engines will wear out and lose power and eventually fail. In the Cessna 310, they have an unbelievably in-depth maintenance system where individual parts will wear depending on how you're handling them. There's even a system which will randomize parts to different levels of wear to simulate an aeroplane which is going through a natural life cycle where parts get replaced at different intervals. That's an incredible level of detail, but that aeroplane is the same price as this one. So you'd expect at least some kind of modeling of wear and tear and of maintenance. I mean, the, the 310 has even got a system where you can clean the plane. I mean, I'm not asking for something like that, but at least some kind of nod to the operational side of running one of these airplanes, the maintenance side of things would have been nice. Again, I realize that it's a very small development team that has made this airplane. But if you're going to be going into this much effort to to make an aircraft of this kind of depth and selling it at this sort of price, you I think you probably need to be thinking about implementing something like that, at least bringing it at some point. So I'm going to put that down as a, as a little bit of a negative. The next item is uh, one that I didn't think I'd be talking about, but we've I've already been waxing lyrical about how, how amazing the performance of the flight uh, the flight model of this airplane is. However, we did manage to get it into an unrecoverable spin. Now, <laughs> now, in that in terms of that, if you did get into a spin in a real life Cessna four one four, I would imagine it would be unbelievably difficult to get it out. I mean, if you had enough altitude, you'd probably find yourself having to use things like asymmetric thrust. Um, out of spin aileron, all kind of tricks to, to try and get it out because twins aren't designed to spin. Uh, very, very few piston twins are uh, capable of being spun um, and recovered. Therefore, generally their aerodynamics are set up to be very, very benign for the most part. The 310 is a little bit snappy, but for the most part, they should be very benign and very, very difficult to spin. Now, I didn't really do anything out of the ordinary when the aeroplane spun on us in the test flight just now. I was pretty neutral on the controls. It's just the, the weight of the aeroplane and the weight and balance, and maybe the CG position and, and all kind of little finicky things like that. It might have contributed to it. I'm not sure. Um, and again, I must say, that's the only time it's ever done that. And I have definitely done quite a few stalls in this aeroplane before. And most of the time, the stalls just happen like they happened the second time that we, uh, we, get, we had a go at that. So maybe it's just a one-off, maybe it's just a little glitch or, or whatever, I don't know. But I, I've got to put it down there because obviously it did happen. Um, and I certainly wouldn't expect a Cessna 414 to tip me into a death spiral uh, as soon as it went into a, a gentle, clean stall. Uh, and one last item on the list here, and that is the price. Now, this aeroplane is around about $40. It is the exact same price as the Milvis Cessna 310, which is going to bring up the obvious comparison, even if you hadn't already drawn it with it being a, a twin engine Cessna for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's gonna bring up the obvious comparison with the Milvis 310. Now the Milvis 310 is, is up to this point probably one of the best airplanes I've ever flown in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It, it's the GA equivalent of the PMDG DC6. Uh, the main issue being, I the flight models maybe a little bit certainly in terms of the yaw on the flight model on that airplane isn't quite what it should be now this airplane to match that one it's going to have to go a long long way and i've already said it doesn't have the the sort of maintenance systems that the uh, the C, the 310 has 
Um, it doesn't have the the um, passenger comfort gauge, which is based on how smooth, nice and smooth you're flying it, and all that kind of stuff. So there are lots of different features and little quirky uh, additional bits on the 310 that this simply doesn't have. Now, what it does have is possibly the best flight model in Microsoft Flight Simulator, certainly for a GA aircraft. It also has a, well, it's basically a much more complex, larger aeroplane. So a lot more effort has got had to go into modeling all of these different systems. And I know that I've said, you know, okay, there's no maintenance and things like that, and the circuit breakers aren't there. But everything that you're going to use on a on a day-to-day, -day, everyday flight, and even some of the things that you won't, things like the, the, the um, cabin dump um, depressurization system, all of those things work perfectly. Um, so you may say, you know, where it kind of built, it regains uh, ground in the in the value race, as it were, is in those sort of, uh, in the depth of those sort of systems. And you know what, I, I would agree with that point. I would take that side. Uh, I'm trying to play a bit of devil's advocate here and remain as neutral as possible. Um, and you may think, you know, okay, uh, it doesn't have as many systems as the 310, therefore it's not worth the same amount of money as the 310. And bear in mind, £40, $40, sorry, for a for a GA aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator is right at the top end of the pricing ladder. It's almost double the price of, of some half-decent add-on aeroplanes for Microsoft Flight Sim. So it's really going to have to be going out of its way uh, to justify that. Um, so certainly for some people that's going to be a downside and a lot of people, you know, when it comes to 310 versus 4 and 4, you're only able to, going to be able to afford uh, just one of them. Uh, so I would certainly say the price is a downside. However, my overall conclusion, and mostly based around the fact that this is my favourite aeroplane to fly in Microsoft Flight Sim, certainly my favourite GA aeroplane to fly in Microsoft Flight Sim, is that it is worth the money. And in the sort of 310 versus 4 and 4 battle, I, I prefer this, to be honest. As much as I love the 310, I prefer flying this aeroplane. Now, part of it is just because I think the 4 and 4 is, is a slightly cooler aeroplane than the 310. As nice as the 310 is, the 4 and 4, just the, the added um, complexity of it and the performance and all the rest of it, just makes it a little bit more interesting to fly in Flight Simulator. But the other thing that kind of swing, swings it this way is just how much fun it is to fly and throw around and just how realistic it feels on the controls. Um, but that's obviously just my opinion. I think there is a hair's breadth between the two. They are very, very, very close. Um, and it really comes down to personal preferences and whether the slightly more realistic flight model on the 4 and 4 is going to swing it to you over all of the other amazing features that the 310 has. Um, and bear in mind, you know, the, the 310 isn't supposed to be as smooth as the 4 and 4. So the part of it is, is the, the, the innate handling characteristics of the aeroplane. Um, Nathan was telling me that the, the 310 can be a, a real sort of a real challenge to fly well because it's it's quite a sort of sporty, sharp handling aeroplane as opposed to the 4 and 4, which is kind of like a big, steady uh, luxury bus, really, <laughs> in terms of its handling. So, you know, part of it is is intentional, I'm sure. Um, but as I said, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate. It's down to you which one you think is better. But for me personally, it's the 4 and 4. And that's the, uh, if you want to take that as a quote, as a takeaway from this video, if you sat all the way to the end, thank you very much. And you can take that quote to bed with you. Um, I'm going to leave it there. If you have watched the whole thing, thank you very much. And I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I really hope that uh, Nathan's mic wasn't uh, wasn't too bad on this one. I tried to mess around with the audio levels and, and make him as uh, as clear as I possibly could. I realise it's it's he's not got the crispest uh, voice quality, I'm afraid. But uh, we, we're sort of we're trying there. We're getting there. Um, <laughs> but please, if you did enjoy the video, leave it a like. If you've not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. We may have passed it already. I don't know. But yeah, if we have passed it, thank you massively to all the people who've subscribed over the the past. Um, almost two years now that we've been running this channel. We're really enjoying it, and I hope you're enjoying it too. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.